with the University of Northern Iowa. Here are the lineups brought to you by Saturn of Carbondale. No haggle, no hassle for you or anyone. Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. SIU with Joel Samberski at quarterback, Muhammad Abdul Qadir, the nation's number one rusher at running back along with Brandon Robinson. Jason Hollingshed and Courtney Abbott at the wide receiver spots and Ryan McAllister at tight end. Brian Akins and Bryce Schaefer at the tackles. Zach Schumacher and Matt Miller at the guards with Mike Fritzler anchoring that offensive line at center. For the Salukis defensively, Lionel Williams and Rodney Smith scheduled to start at the ends with Mark Phillip and Brandon Walker in the middle. The linebackers, Royal Whitaker and Eric Egan, both coming off very good ball games last week against Western Illinois. And deep, Antoine Jackson, Cortez McBerry, Alexis Moreland, Southern's leading tackler. Wright gets the start, Paul Wright, or I'm sorry, Andre Rockwell gets the start at safety for Justin George, and Chris Gadsden rounds out the Saluki starting lineup. Northern Iowa will feature a quarterback change, we expect. Sophomore Tom Petrie, who led them to a 6-2 and record before he was injured last year, is expected to start tonight in relief of Griff Jurgens, whom he lost the starting quarterback job to at the beginning of the year. They have the league's number three rusher, Adam Benz, as their featured running back. So the starting lineup is brought to you by Saturn of Carbondale. No haggle, no hassle for you or anyone. Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. Here's what's at stake tonight. The Salukis can beat back-to-back top 12 teams. They can start 2-0 in league play for the first time in 11 years. And because they were 45th in the top 25 poll this week, receiving some votes after the upset of Western Illinois, Southern could crack the top 25 if it upsets 12th-ranked Northern Iowa here tonight on Parents Weekend at the MAC. It's SIU in Northern Iowa. That's the pregame show. Stay tuned. The ball game is next from Carbondale. Kroger Fresh Deli Fried Chicken Take home convenience with homemade taste Kroger Fresh Deli Fried Chicken Tastes like Grandma used to make The Kroger Deli has wishbone fried chicken that tastes better than ever. We hand bread it with a special blend of herbs and spices and it's always fresh. So it's juicier, more tender and moist like Grandma's. Kroger Fresh Deli Fried Chicken Take home convenience with homemade taste Hey, Saluki fans! Go crazy! You've got Saluki fried? Show it! Flaunt it! Tell the world you love the dogs at Saluki Central on the Strip in Carbondale. T-shirts, sweatshirts, polos, button-downs, custom gifts, glassware, everything you need to show your Greek and Saluki pride. It's the largest and most eclectic selection of Saluki stuff in Southern Illinois. So before you go to the game, grab some new Saluki gear from Saluki Central on the Strip in Carbondale. If you love the Salukis, go crazy! At Saluki Lukey Central. Hi, I'm Vicki Scoggins with Century 21 Real Estate in Carbondale. In my first career, I took care of hearts in the cardiac catheterization lab at Memorial Hospital of Carbondale. Now, in my present career with Century 21, I also take care of hearts by finding my customers the home of their dreams. Because home is where the heart is. Give me, Vicki Scoggins, a call today. I'll put my heart into helping you. Saluki Football on Magic 95.1 is brought to you in part by Rob Cash and E.N. Baker, Chevrolet Cadillac in Marion, the one place to go. By Saluki Central, go crazy with SIU apparel from Saluki Central on the Strip in Carbondale. By Rich Davis, Vicki Scoggins and Daryl Phillips of Century 21 House of Realty. By Kroger, home of the Kroger Plus card, we give you savings you cannot get anywhere else. This is Saluki Football on Magic 95.1. SIU and Northern Iowa at McAndrews Stadium. Northern Iowa 3-2, 0-1 in Gateway Conference play. Southern Illinois University 3-3, 1-0 in Gateway Conference play. Tonight's referees brought to you by Harbaugh's Cafe. The easiest call you'll make this weekend is breakfast or lunch at Harbaugh's on the south end of the Strip, Carbondale. Chuck Feeney is the referee tonight. Scott Jones, Richard Townsend, Rick Hincamper, Ron Snodgrass, Kerry Rockwell, and Gary Crawl, his crew. The referees brought to you by Harbaugh's Cafe. The easiest call you'll make this weekend is breakfast or lunch at Harbaugh's Cafe on the south end of the Strip, Carbondale. Southern has had a good run against Northern Iowa, as good a run as anybody's had, Gene, in the Gateway Conference. It's just one of those strange things in sports, Mike. Sometimes you see it, it's hard to explain why a team matches up with another team in a certain way, but SIU, regardless of what the year is, what the records are, they always seem to play you and I tough, extremely tough here at McAndrew, and you can just hope for the same here tonight. 
Crowd of about 9,000 coming in now. There are cars that are backed up out on the main drive that leads into SIU's campus. Plenty of people, as always, out in the north tailgate areas. Looks like there's always about 1,000 out there. Scotty Everhart has it teed up for Northern, for Southern, for Northern Iowa. On the return, it'll be Ben Sanderson. He is the deepest of three for you and I. Southern right to left. Southern trying to stay in first place. And here's Everhart's kickoff. It's end over end. Win not a factor. He hammered this one nine yards deep. It's dropped by Sanders, and he picks it up in Northern Iowa. We'll start at the 20-yard line, and Everhart coming off perhaps the best game of his four-year Saluki career with an excellent kickoff to start this game in the McDonald's Magic 95.1. Honorary co-captain Kristen German of Carbondale hustles out to pick up the kicking tee. She and Austin Chu of DeSoto are the McDonald's Magic 95.1 honorary captains. Southern's in white helmets, maroon tops, and white pants with maroon trim. Northern Iowa's in purple helmets with white uh, tops and purple pants. And Petrie is the quarterback. For the first time this year, he gets the start for Northern Iowa, and they run Benj off left side, and he runs to the 24 and is smacked right there by Alexis Moreland and two other Salukis. Moreland is SIU's leading tackler, and it brings up second down and about five yards to go for Northern Iowa, which is moving left to right here as we watch the top McAndrews Stadium. Benj now with 595 yards rushing on 130 carries this year. Wide receiver to the right side is their leading receiver, Marlon Marlis Mays. He has 25 catches this year. Everyone else is in tight. Here's Bench to the right side. Southern's there. McBerry forces him inside, and they bring him down at the line of scrimmage. Up there was Rodney Smith, Gene, to make the hip, but McBerry set it up. He really did, Mike. Excellent point. McBerry didn't make the tackle, but he fought off his blocker and forced the play back inside. Southern had excellent help. SIU defense off to a good start. Salukis take Anquan Jackson out in the secondary, put Steron Davidson in. They anticipate a pass here on third down and five. Davidson playing with a broken right hand. Two receivers go to the left side. One receiver goes to the right side. Northern Iowa opens the formation a bit on third down and five. Option near side run. It is Petrie, and he runs for a first down to the 35, out to the 37-yard line. He just kept it off right end. The strength of the formation was to the left side. He ran to the right side, and he ran for a first down. He ran for 53 yards against Southern a year ago in a Panther win at the Dome at UNI. The ball is at the 37 and one half yard line. Northern Iowa with the football. We're just underway. No score here at McAndrew Stadium. Eric Egan coming off a 13 tackle performance calls the defensive set. We mentioned some of Jurgen's struggles. The other thing that Petrie gives you if you're you and I is that exact play right there. He'll gain some yards for you on the ground. Here is Petrie in shotgun now, and Southern with a four-man front, and they uh, run it off the left side. They've got him for a loss back on the 33-yard line. Ankle tackle by Southern Illinois University's Eric Egan, who gets his first tackle on the game's third play, and they nail him for a loss, and it's Jason Breland getting early action loss of four, and it's second and 14. Benj comes out of the ball game for you and I, and we may see Petrie's first pass. He's going to go directly under center. They have two receivers to the right side, one receiver to the left side. That's Mays, their top receiver, and Petrie shifts into shotgun. And they have two wide receivers now to either side. Quarterback draw. Petrie pulls it down and runs to the 35, breaks the tackle to the 40. He's to the 45 and has a first down out at the 48-yard line. And Petrie ran for 15 yards on a quarterback draw. And Northern Iowa has a first down. They've yet to ask him to throw the ball, and they didn't ask him to throw it very much a year ago. Northern Iowa, under Farley especially, former linebacker, all-conference linebacker at UNI, was a run-oriented club a year ago after all those years with Ryan Helming and Kurt Warner. This team lining up, played Smash Mouth football a year ago, didn't the first six games this year, is right now. Hand off to Benz. He runs to the 15 to the Saluki 48-yard line. It's a gain of about four, and it leads to second down and six. SIU's defense is allowing 410 yards per game. It's allowed 100 points the last two weeks. Still, Kill saw defensive improvement last week, though only against the run. They're still allowing 245 passing per game. Northern Iowa's done all this on the run, on the ground rather, 32 yards rushing so far. Second down, six, and they give it to the fullback, and he doesn't get very much. He got about uh, two, and it leads to third down and about five yards to go. 
You and I on third down conversions this year is 24 of 77. Southern's opponents this year are hitting 34% of their third down conversions. And let's see if the Saluki D can put up a stop here. They have the call from the sideline. Tracy Clays, their defensive coordinator, works in the press box to our right. Three receivers to the right side, one to the left side. We're scoreless. The game's just underway. It is third down and four. There's the snap. Here is Petrie to throw for the first time. A quick out. It's off the intended receiver's hands at the 40-yard line. It's incomplete, and it's fourth down. It was intended for Sanderson on the far boundary. He was open, but Petrie misfired. It's fourth down. Derek Frost is in the punt. He simply threw that ball poorly, Mike. Andre Rockwell was beaten by about three or four yards. Plenty of room for him to tuck that pass in right on the sideline, but it went off his hands. Frost set a school record averaging 52 yards per punt last week against Western Kentucky. He's in there to punt now for Northern Iowa. He's at 41-5 for the year. High snap. He hauls it down. The kick is very high. Justin George runs up and grabs it at the 16-yard line, and that's where Joel Samberski and company will start. First and 10 moving right to left here at McAndrew Stadium. The Magic 95.1 McDonald's honorary captains, Kristen German of Carbondale and Austin Chu of DeSoto, they registered at participating McDonald's in Southern Illinois. They accompanied the Saluki captains with a coin toss. They'll retrieve the kicking tee after every Saluki kickoff. The McDonald's Magic 95.1 Honorary Captains Contest open to kids 8 to 12 years old. One boy, one girl chosen for each home game register at participating McDonald's. Joel Samberski, Muhammad Abdul Qadir, and the Saluki offense break the huddle. Veteran Mike Fritzler ready to snap it to Joel whose passing efficiency would be number three in the country if he'd thrown enough passes this year. It's Muhammad off left side. He runs to the 20, and then he's shoved back. He picked up about two, and it leads down to second and eight. Muhammad, of course, at 250 yards per game, his last four games for the year at 202 per game. And he is two touchdowns shy of the school record for rushing touchdowns in a season. Brandon Robinson replaces Walter Bucky at fullback. Muhammad is also just 10 points shy of the school record for points in one year, and he's only played, really, four games. A wing on the left side. Robinson in motion, short drop on the option. Toss play, it's Muhammad on the boundary, trying to get to the corner. Hit, breaks one tackle, runs to the 25, and is hauled down out of bounds at the 27-yard line, and it leads to third down and about two yards to go. Gave him a chance with some great second effort. It looks like he, it looked like he was going to be brought down for virtually no game, but he popped off the first tackler, came back around the sidelines and it's going to bring up third and about two. Muhammad with 15 touchdowns this year, 14 on the ground. He's averaging his points per game make basketball players jealous. He's at 18 points per game. It's third down and a yard to go. A little bit more than a yard. Southern's 40% in third down conversions this year. Eyebone backfield now, Southern goal line offense. It's Muhammad. It's a first down as he runs to the 29-yard line. And, well, wait a minute. They're not going to give him as quite as good a spot as it appeared he might. Northern Iowa had 11 up there. Net Chuck Feeney says it's a first down, and it is. The Dogs have a first down at the 29-yard line. Southern averaging 48 and one-half points per ball game. Scored 54 last week in a win. 45 the week before in a loss. Southern... With 99 points the last two weeks, it's combined score of its last two games, 100 for the opponents to 99 for Southern. And the Salukis have split those two games. Three receivers to the right side. Samberski's in shotgun. Five-man front for you and I. And Joel options to the right side. Has Muhammad in front of him and is going to keep it. And he cuts up to the 32 with penalty markers down. And a fumble that Northern Iowa comes up with, but the whistles blow the play dead. Samberski fumbled after the whistle. Two flags thrown trailing the play where there are about four Saluki offensive linemen. And Chuck Feeney, the referee, signals a hold on SIU. So the Salukis get an early penalty in this game. Southern is playing at home for the third to last time this year. Only two home games remain after this game, Indiana State and Western Kentucky. Southern hits the road for the next three weeks. The Salukis opened the year with five home games of their first seven. You'll hear from referee Chuck Feeney in this scoreless ball game right now. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, 
Repeat first down. Coming up on the Golden Corral halftime, Russ Eisenstein will check scores. And he'll also visit with Saluki coach Bruce Weber. That's coming up at halftime, the Golden Corral halftime. First down, the Dogs need the 39 for another first down. Samberski tips, uh, taps the left side of his helmet, takes the snap, drops back, draw play. It's Muhammad trying to get off right end, sheds two tackles, can't shed a third, and he runs to the 23, and you and I here early is making it very, very hard for Abdul Qadir. As he's rushed now unofficially 135 times this season. It is amazing when you consider you talk about him only basically playing in four ball games, didn't play in the first one, then the second ball game, just a couple of snaps. A couple of lopsided Division II games. Mikey didn't play much in the second half in those. If you really look at it by the quarter, he's been one of the most productive players yeah. you've ever seen. It really, he only played against one of the two Division II teams. He didn't play in the opener. He had a bad hamstring, so he didn't play against Wesleyan. Now Samberski breaks the huddle and calls time. Let's break for a minute. We're at McAndrew, and there's no score. What were you expecting to pay for a new SUV? $20,000? $30,000? $40,000? Not at Ike Auto Park. You can drive home in a new 2002 Kia Sportage priced at only $13,995. How? We are Southern Illinois' number one import dealer and with huge customer cashback offers on all 2002 Kias, prices couldn't be any better. All new Kias come with an industry-leading long-haul warranty. 10 years or 100,000 miles. See Ike Auto Park for all the details. Two miles east of University Mall in Carbondale. And remember, you don't have the right price, so you have Ike's price. McDonald's loves to see you smile. And if you're between 8 and 12 years old, McDonald's would love to see you be the honorary captain at the next SIU home game. Sign up today at participating McDonald's. Two boys and two girls will be chosen for each game to help with the coin toss and retrieve the tea after kickoffs. You'll be announced to the crowd at the game by Mike Reese on Magic 95.1. The 2002 McDonald's honorary captains. Sign up at participating McDonald's today. SIU took its first time out, went to the sideline, now back at the line of scrimmage. The Dogs need the 39 for a first down. At 8.54 of the first quarter, no score, SIU in Northern Iowa, McAndrew Stadium. Ryan McAllister, the tight end, is upright for the first time this year at left end. There's the snap in shotgun at Samberski. Blitzes on his, he throws behind McAllister, incomplete. A blitz by Justin Overman, the linebacker, hurried Samberski, who threw behind McAllister, and it's third down for SIU. That probably would have been about a six-yard pass, Mike. Had he caught it, would have set up third and 10, but now it's third and 16. The Dogs are at the 23-yard line. SIU and Northern Iowa. The Dogs figure to... Get Northern's best effort. Southern in first place, and the Panthers coming off a home loss. They've only lost eight league games at the Dome in 50 tries. Offset backfield, movement on the line, and Northern Iowa comes across and slams Brian Akins. Matt Mitchell, the defensive end, came across. Apparently, he saw Brian Akins move. And the officials throw the flags and blow the whistles, and let's see if it's Mitchell or Akins. Good ball. And it's offside, offside on Northern Iowa. On that the was defense. A silly play. Five yards. Still third down. <laughs> but coach, I saw him. Well, apparently you didn't. Third down, that helps. Third down eleven for the Salukis here at their twenty-eight yard line. They need the thirty-nine for a first down. Courtney Abbott, Southern's leading receiver, thirteen catches in six games, wide to the left side. Everyone else in tight and an offset eye backfield. There's the snap. Here's on the option. Samberski keeping, keeping. Muhammad is with him. He's holding. Penalty marker down, and Samberski didn't pitch it, and they run to the 33. It's a gain of about four, but may come back. A flag thrown by Feeney. The referee is another hold on SIU. Both times when he hasn't pitched and he's tried to string it out, SIU's been called for a hold. Not a lot of uh, jump in Southern step offensively here at the start of this game. And it proves how important it is to produce because Southern always looks like it has a jump offensively because it's always gaining yards. Holding on the offense. Decline. Fourth down. Fourth down and seven yards to go, and Scott Everhart will punt. Teams very rarely look like they have any life or getting much done when they don't move the ball, and Southern didn't move it much there in the first possession in Northern Iowa. Bigger Northern Iowa's defensive line bigger than Southern's offensive line, and Southern having a tough time creating a big enough hole for Muhammad to get through so far. 
Here's Everhart to punt it for SIU. He's standing back at the 19-yard line. And it's a fake, and they get it to Robinson. Big game, 50, 45 in Northern Iowa, 40. One man to beat, he beat him. Foot race for the goal line. Brandon, 10, 5, touchdown. Southern on a fake punt. Southern ran the fake punt, and it's a 67-yard touchdown run with a penalty marker thrown late. There's a penalty marker in Northern Iowa territory at the 26-yard line. A penalty marker at the 26. The touchdown will hold up. A touchdown of 67 yards by Brandon Robinson, who caught the winning touchdown. If Jerry Kill wants to go to Las Vegas, I want to go with him because he's proven to me already this year he's not afraid to try anything. On the scoring team, 15 yards on the extra point. The touchdown is good. That flag was thrown at the 26-yard line, and Jerry Kill is out at the 20-yard line, and he wants to know why the flag. Apparently some sort of celebration... And Kill is just irate as the linesman walks him back to the sideline. So the fake punt works, and that's probably the same thing that they called last week. Remember when Fritzler snapped it instead to Everhart. And then Everhart had to kick it under siege. Now Scott has to try a 35-yard extra point. Southern's ahead 6 to nothing. Abbott is the holder from the 25-yard line. High snap. He gets it down. The kick is up. It's long enough from 35, and he got it. Scott Everhart nails the 35-yard extra point, and the penalty does not cost them a point. 7-0 dogs, and back to the Mac in just a minute. If you are a seafood lover, you're going to love this. Prairie Land Seafood, the same company that sells high-quality, locally produced seafood to your favorite restaurants, is now selling to the public. That's right, you can take home and prepare the same seafood you order at the restaurant. Just think of the money you'll save. Pick up a box or buy in bulk from Prairie Land Seafood. Open Monday through Friday from 8 to 4 on Route 154, two miles east of the square in Pinckneyville. Or call Prairie Land Seafood at 357-FISH. It's time once again for SIU Alumni Association Night at Shryock Auditorium. Friday, December 6th, alumni members are invited to a holiday dinner at the old main room of the SIU Student Center, followed by a special presentation of Christmas from Dublin, starring the three Irish tenors. A limited number of dinner reservations and discounted tickets are available for SIU Alumni Association members. Call 453-2408 to reserve your tickets and join the SIU Alumni Association at Shryock Auditorium on Friday, December December 6th. Hi, Pat Benton inviting you to join me weekday mornings on the celebration of life at White Rock Magic 95.1. Southern runs the fake punt for a touchdown, and Brandon Robinson, who scored the game-winning touchdown last week, threw a touchdown pass a year ago, runs 67 yards for a touchdown here tonight on a fake punt. And Everhart hammers the kickoff, but short and out of bounds, and he follows up the 35-yard extra point with a kickoff out of bounds. So Southern Illinois leads it 7 to nothing here at McAndrews Stadium at the 832 mark of the first quarter. Mike, I think that was the exact play they were trying to run last week when they were not all on the same page down there and when it looked like it was a bad snap. Kick out of bounds on the kickers. The receivers take the ball at the 35. Let's look at some Gateway Conference scores, and here's Russ. Thank you, Mike. Halftime. Welcome to Division I AA football, Florida International, Western Kentucky 42, the Golden Panthers nothing, Youngstown State 24, Florida Atlantic 3, Western Illinois 7, Illinois State 3, and that's in the second quarter of play, and Southwest Missouri State 7, Indiana 6, in Terre Haute. That's Indiana State 6, in Terre Haute. Back to you, Mike. I see you're the official greeter for 1AA football now. Absolutely. Congratulations. Petrie with a handoff to Ben Southern's there to smack him. It's a gain of only one. It leads to second down and nine with the dogs ahead 7 to nothing. Lionel Williams worked his way past a blocker and just leveled the runner for a short gain. Gain of two for Adam Benj. Eric Egan ready to call the Saluki defense. Tom Matukowicz, the Saluki linebacker coach, gets the call from Tracy Clays, the Saluki defensive coordinator. Dogs late at 7 to nothing. a little over 10,000 here right now. Actually, kind of a disappointing crowd, especially on the student side. Northern Iowa spreads it out. Two receivers left, two receivers right. It's second down, eight yards to go. Southern rushes four, quick out pattern low. It's dropped at the 42-yard line by Gallus. I'm sorry, by Mays. Marlis Mays doesn't drop very many. Now it's third down and eight. As Mays sat in the seam of the Saluki zone, and Petrie hasn't thrown either pass very well. He's 0 for 2. Southern leads it 7-0. A fake punt 
by Brandon Robinson. 67 yards for the touchdown. And Southern, with Everhart's point after, leads it 7 0. Let's see if the Dogs can stop him here on third down. Get a stop, a three and out after the fake punt for a TD. It's third down. Here is Petrie to throw. He has time over the middle. High. It's grabbed by Gallus, but shot. Stop shy of the first down. Alexis Moreland with a first down saving tackle at the 43-yard line. It is fourth down and two yards to go. And Derek Frost in to punt for UNI. The Cardinals won today 5-4 to four in Game 3 of the NL Championship Series. They'll play Game 4 tomorrow night. They're down two games to one. The game's at 6.45 tomorrow night. Now here's Derek Frost to punt. Northern Iowa shifts. And it's fourth down and two. There is the snap. He has time. He kicks it out of there beautifully. Back is uh, George to the six. He feels it, fumbles it, kicks it, picks it up, and falls on it at the eight-yard line. I doubt very seriously if he's supposed to be catching the punt right around the six-yard line, Mike. That thing probably is going to go into the end zone, but very, very scary moment for Southern there. He had plenty of room, and that has to be the only reason he even attempted it, and he's upset with himself as George comes to the sideline and talks to Saluki assistant coach Jay Savell. Joel and the Saluki offense come onto the field. And the Dogs have it deep in their own territory at the 8-yard line, but they lead it 8 to nothing. The offense on each of its first two possessions has had poor field position. But it has seven points. Robinson, the fullback. The tailback is Muhammad. There's a wing on the left side, a wide out to the left side. It's Abbott. And here's the snap, and Joel gives it to Muhammad off right tackle. He runs out to the 10 to the 12-yard line. It's three yards for Muhammad, and it leads to second down. Seven yards to go, and Northern Iowa has six and seven men up in the box here, and they're making it difficult for Muhammad and making it difficult for he and Sam Bursky in the Saluki offense. The ball is at the 13-yard line. They've still picked up four yards, and it's second down, six yards to go. But when you have a guy like Muhammad, who averages just under eight yards per carry, when he gets four, it catches your attention. Mike Fritzler ready to snap it. He has Miller and Schumacher at the guards. And Akins and Schaefer at the tackles. And it's a hand, it's a, a give to Muhammad who smacked at the line of scrimmage and is shoved back. And it's third down at about five yards to go. And it seems like, Gene, off this early action here in the first quarter that Sam is going to have to throw the ball pretty well here today. He's going to have to do something to open it up, either yep. throw the ball a little bit or perhaps be more on the option himself because right now you're not going to be able to just line up straight ahead of you and I right now and run it up the middle, at least not so far in the first part of this first half. Jason Hollingshed is into the ball game. Bilal Rashid is out of the ball game. That's at wide receiver. Southern is without Kellen Allen, the speedy freshman. He broke a hand last week. Is out for the year. Three receivers left, including Robinson. There's the snap and shotgun hit as he throws. Caught by Robinson at the 18-yard line. It's very close to a first down. Abbott, the Saluki wide receiver, says it's enough for a first down, and so does Brandon Robinson. Last week it was key, Mike, and that Robinson was in the offense a little bit early, caught a few passes. Here he catches the pass for the yep. first down. They've got to mix in some of that stuff to probably make Mohammed's game the way it needs to be. All right, B with a good game there on the catch. He's out at the 19-yard line, and the Dogs pick up the first down. Robinson with his sixth catch of the season. He's third on the ball club in receptions just past McAllister two receivers to the right side one receiver to the left side first and 10 from the 19 yard line and it's a draw play to Abdul Qadir gets to the 20 yard line a gain of about one they've run him wide they've run him inside they've run him on delays and uh, he's had a tough time getting going here early in this game still the Salukis have 92 yards rushing unofficially four carries for 16 yards his first step is so quick he can break one at any time Second down, eight yards to go. He's attracted the attention of Saluki fans, including four across in the student section, who are keeping tabs of his rushing total for the year with numbers attached to the stands across the way. Right now at 1,034. Low snap, drop play to Muhammad, trying to go off right in, does. 25, submarine, and brought down at the 28-yard line. Great tackle. A first down saving tackle by Northern Iowa linebacker Jonathan Harrell. And it leads to third down, and they need the 29-yard line for a first down. And, boy, Harrell made a great open field tackle on Abdul Qadir. And he may have been gone because he had a pretty good head of steam going when Harrell brought him down. Abdul Qadir listed at 5'7", 190 pounds. Third down, one yard to go. Will they try to get outside here, or will they run Muhammad or Robinson on the inside? Robinson's going to line up as, an out, as a receiver now. He's the inside man among trip receivers to the left side. 
And Samberski's in shotgun low snap, and he struggles with Muhammad, gives it to him, and they lose yards back at the 20-yard line. That play was doomed from the moment the low snap was grabbed by Samberski. Then he collided with Muhammad, and third and one turns into fourth and about seven, and Everhart will punt it away for SIU. Well, they're disappointed, Mike, but they're very happy that they have the football. Yep. Everhart averaging just under 40 yards per punt. And he's in there to punt now for Southern. He was in there to punt after the first series, but Southern snapped it to Robinson, and he didn't stop running until he scored a touchdown. Fritzler to snap it again. Here it is. Low. It hops to Everhart. He has time. He gets it out of there, and it's a great kick. Oh, he hit the daylights out of that. Sanderson all the way back to the 15, retreats to the 8, steps up to the 15, breaks the tackle, runs to the 20-yard line. Down he goes at the 20-yard line. What a kick by Scott Everhart. That thing was fielded at the 15 from the line of scrimmage to the 25. An amazing kick in a lot of ways. First off, he had to play shortstop to get the low snap, and then he just really launched one, a 61-yarder. 61-yard punt is the official call on Scott Everhart's punt, and his play the last two weeks has been excellent for the Salukis. Now Northern Iowa takes over at its 21-yard line, and Petrie under center, 7-0 in favor of the Dogs. Two receivers, a man in motion. It's a handoff to Ben. Sweeping off right end. Cuts back to the 24. Where here, Eric Egan brings him down with Moreland. Southern's top two tacklers. It's a gain of four. And it leads to second down, six yards to go. A lot of guys were very emotional last week after that win, Mike. Probably none more than Eric Egan. It really meant a lot for him to beat Western Illinois. First time in his career. First time anybody wearing the maroon and white had beaten Western since 1983. Now Northern Iowa puts a tight end on the right side, two backs and a wide receiver to the left side, and runs the ball with Benj off the left side, and he head down gets to the 28, no further. You can see Southern making some strides against the run. Southern is not a brick wall against the run, but is much better than it was the first two weeks of this season. Now it's third and two. Really been getting good linebacking play. Royal Whitaker in on that yep. tackle has really come on strong as a freshman. Egan on that tackle as well. He's replaced Jeff Jones. Whitaker has an inside backer. Third down and two. Northern Iowa one for three on third down con conversions in this game. Awaiting the snap, it's Petrie. And they run it again with Benj, and Southern is there to bring him down at the 30-yard line. He's a yard shy of the first down, and Northern Iowa thought it could run it three times and get a first down. It could not, and Derek Frost is in to punt again for the Panthers, who have had some offensive troubles, and Southern's defense, which has had its share of troubles, has posted a shutout here at the 150 mark of the first quarter. Frost to punt to Justin George. Frost has punted twice in this game, and he's averaging 39 and a half yards per punt. Awaiting the snap. Southern has a nine-man front. There's the snap. They're going after him. Oh, Rockwell almost got it. It's a wobbler to George at the 25. Runs back to the 23. Gets a block to the 29. To the near corner. Being chased and pushed out of bounds. Penalty marker down at the 38-yard line. Southern right now has the ball at the 38-yard line as we await the penalty. Nick Wofford, a Saluki receiver, turned around as if the flag was on him, and it must be because Jerry Kill is giving him a chewing on the Saluki sideline at about the 40-yard line, and that penalty is going to muck up well, good field position. You feel bad enough when it's an illegal block and it has something to do with spraying you with the mm -hmm. play. That was about five yards behind the play. Southern's committing too many penalties. 14 of them last week, three now this week. Illegal block in the back on the receivers during the return. Ten yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Yeah, that's just sloppy on yep. defense. You've got to know where the ball is, and once it's past you, there's nothing you're going to be able to do to influence the play in any way but bad if you're trying to block, and that's what happens. Southern blocks Northern Iowa in the back, and the ball goes all the way back to the 24-yard line. 124 to play in the first quarter. Southern leads it 7 to nothing. Ball's at the 24-yard line. There's the snap. It's a handoff to Muhammad. He gets off right tackle for only a yard. Maybe two. And it's second down and eight. The scoring summary brought to you by the Furniture King, just east of the University Mall, Carbondale, Southern Illinois' largest furniture store. Southern scored on its first possession. Brandon Robinson ran 67 yards with a fake punt. Scott Everhart converted. 7-0 is the score. The Salukis lead it. The scoring summary brought to you by the Furniture King, just east of the Mall, Carbondale, Southern Illinois' largest furniture store. 
Final minute of the first uh, quarter. Second down seven. They gave Muhammad three on that play. And out of the eye, it's Samberski looking right, throwing right. Caught by Abbott at the 32. Out of bounds. Head first. Looks like he got a first down, and he did. Sure-handed Courtney Abbott, a Juco transfer receiver from Coffeyville Community College. He and Muhammad were Juco teammates. He lunged for a first down at the 35, and the dogs moved the sticks with another first cellular first down. Abbott did not only a great job of catching the football, Mike, but you knew as soon as he caught it, he knew exactly where he had to get for the first down. First cellular first downs mean first cellular contributes to the Saluki Athletic Scholarship Fund. First cellular, Southern's official wireless provider. A tight end on the right side, McAllister. A wing on the left side. Running backs in an eye. First and ten for the dogs. Hand off to Muhammad. Off right tackle. He's going to be hit for a loss. Back of the 33-yard line. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. With 35 seconds to play in the first quarter. And UNI is ready for King Muhammad here tonight. Sam Burks, he's only thrown three passes. Two of them have been caught, both for first downs, and you still get the idea Southern has to pass a little bit more in this football game. He was hit behind the line, but able to dive forward for a yard. Second down, nine yards to go. Wide receiver to the left side, a wing on the left side. Running backs are in and I for SIU, including Abbott. Nope, it's Bucky. Toss play. It's Muhammad on the pitch. Northern Eye was there and lost back at the 30-yard line. About six yards. The triple option is ending up with no option here for Samberski and Muhammad here early in this game, and it's third down and 15 yards to go. UNI is really pursuing well on the defensive end as we've come to the end of the first quarter. The Salukis pitch a, pitch a shutout in the first quarter. Hang on here. The officials are still discussing it. And now we have officially come to the end of the first quarter. Through one at the MAC, it's seven to nothing in favor of SIU. Caught by Robinson at the six, he's to the five, to the end zone for a touchdown. SIU football at Illinois State Saturday on Magic ninety five point one. The Dogs are sponsored in part by Rob Cash and Ian Baker Chevrolet Cadillac Route thirteen East Marion. By Muggsy's in Carbondale. Live music every weekend at Muggsy's Entertainment Center. And by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 702. Providing a better lifestyle for members and a better life for all. Redbird Saluki, Saturday at 1 on Magic 95.1. Scott Everhart, you bet! Whether you're repairing a leaky faucet or remodeling your bathroom, Right to It Center can help. Everything you need for your plumbing projects, from faucets to toilets, bathtubs to tub surrounds, showers to caulk, Right to It Center has it all. And with our friendly service at Fast Checkout, you'll get to work in no time. For any plumbing project, big or small, we have it all. Right to It Center in Murfreesboro and Sparta. When you build with Right to It Center. With all that we have, you've got it made. After the ball game, it's Muggsy's in Carbondale. Muggsy McGuire is your pregame and postgame Saluki headquarters. Rick Derringer in performance tonight at Muggsy's new entertainment center. It wants to be Leon Russell. He's having some health problems. Rick Derringer stepping in. He's at Muggsy's tonight. Here's Samberski with the first play of the second quarter. Here he is to throw off play action up the far sideline. Rob, it's a great catch on the boundary, and he tiptoes it, and he gets a first down. And B-Rob is doing it all here in the last two weeks. He has an 11-yard gain, a fine pass by Sam Bursky. Good pass to the boundary, and the Dogs have a first down. Yeah, he stepped up probably more than anybody on this roster the last couple of ball games, really becoming a factor for Southern. Caught a couple of passes in this game for, for, for first downs. Of course, he had the 67-yard touchdown on the fake punt. And SIU rolling now all the way to the 46-yard line. Abdul Qadir with just 12 carry, just 25 yards on 12 carries so far. This may be a night Sam Bursky's passing will be essential. Dogs lead it 7 to nothing early in the second quarter. Backs are in an offset eye. Wide out to the right side is Abbott. Here's Sam Bursky to Muhammad off left end. Got a block from McAllister to the corner. 50, 48, and out of bounds. The interesting thing, Mike, is Sam Bursky has only rushed the ball once so far, too. And he's been usually much more active back there on the ground himself. Well, Northern Iowa has really pursued well left and right, Gene. The Southern tries to untrack, unhinge the triple option. And they've made it very difficult for Sam Bursky to get any yards on his own. Into the ballgame, Cipriano Montez at wide receiver for the Salukis. Out Abbott. In Hollingshed. Out Bucky as the Salukis go to four wides on second down and about four yards to go. They lead it 7 to nothing, trying to beat a top 12 team for the second time in as many weeks. McAllister tied on the left side. Throw Big Mac the ball. Running backs at an eye. 
on second down. Samperski looking left and throwing high. Grab by Montez. It's a first down on a quick out at the 43-yard line. So Samperski chipping away. First to Robinson. Now to Montez. Montez has been hurt. They like his future. He just made his first catch as a Saluki. Samperski gets two or three passes like that. It may all of a sudden open Mohamed abdul Kadir up for a long run. Kind of a surprise, perhaps, after a couple of quick out passes. SIU moving the football now out past midfield. First down at the 48-yard line. The dogs are in UNI territory for the first time. They have a touchdown in this game. Robinson, a 67-yard run. Following a first cellular first down, Sam Bursky is directly under center. And he takes the snap. Here he is to throw. Nope, top tosses it to Abdul Qadir. Penalty marker down. Northern Iowa is there to smash him at the 40-yard line. It's a gain of about three, but it's probably coming back. Southern's hit a stretch here where it's committing way too many penalties. Let's see if this one is on the Salukis. They committed three in the first quarter. And their first to the second quarter is pending, and it's procedure on SIU. So it'll become first and 15. We saw this twice last week, and each time when Southern had... A five-yard penalty on first down become first and 15. They immediately got a first down after it, so they just as soon have the playback and just have five yards right here. Illegal formation on the offense, five yards from the previous spot, still first down. They've had a, a handful of penalties on illegal formations the last two weeks. Kill and company, Matt Limegrover is his offensive coordinator. They've put some new formations in in the last two weeks. They've done a good job of mixing up Southern's offense, adding to it each week. When you're the underdog, you got to try some things, and Kill and Lime Grover and company are, including that fake punt for a touchdown. First and 15, dogs back at the UNI 48. Directly under center, it's a handoff to Muhammad. Off left guard, he runs to the 46 and is shoved back. He gained about two, and that puts him at 27 for the game. And only Southeast Missouri has done this against Muhammad this year, and he didn't play very much against them, just carried five times, and he was in there, of course, when Southern fumbled inside the Southeast Missouri 10-yard line. He and Sam Bursky never got together on the exchange on that play. Sam Bursky, who's yet to throw an interception in his collegiate career, gets the play call from the sideline. Wide to the right side, Courtney Abbott. Tight on the left side, Ryan McAllister. The backs are offset. Behind Sam Bursky on second down, play action. Joel to throw, he has time, throws it long. Up the near sideline, Abbott is there, caught it at the 18 and out of bounds. Great catch. He had double coverage and he had a step on both of them, including Iowa State transfer Benny Sapp and a great throw by Sam Bursky who put it in there to Courtney Abbott. He's five out of six now in the air and that's the best part of Southern's game so far. They're taking the run away, the pass is there and Joel's taking it. A first cellular first down gives the dogs the ball at the 16-yard line. That one goes for 31 yards. Southern all the way down to the 16-yard line. The Salukis in the red zone. They lead it 7 to nothing. Southern much improved in the red zone this season. The Salukis are at 84% in the red zone this year. 27 of 32 times inside the 20-yard line, they've scored some sort of points. From the 16, Joel takes the snap, and it's a handoff to Muhammad. Off the left side of the 15 to the 14 and down to the 13-yard line. It's a gain of about three for Muhammad, and at least a second down and seven. We're in the opening two minutes of the second quarter. Southern leads it 7 to nothing. Bilal Rashid comes into the ball game, and out of the ball game goes Hollingshed. 15 carries for 36 yards now for Abdul Qadir. And normally, Mike, this is the portion of the field that wouldn't surprise you at all if all of a sudden he popped through there quickly and scores from about 15 yards out, but it's been very tough here tonight. Second down, eight yards to go. The ball's at the 15-yard line. Abbott wide to the right side. Everyone else is in tight. Robinson and Muhammad are in the backfield. And it's a toss play. It's Muhammad. He's looking to throw it. Sets up. Abbott is open. Tosses it up there. Touchdown. Muhammad can't run it. He can throw it. Do it all, King Muhammad. He threw a touchdown from 15 yards away. And the dogs have a punt return, a fake punt for a TD. And they have a halfback pass for a TD. Well, as I mentioned before, it's one thing to put a lot of stuff in your playbook, Mike. But not a lot of people have the guts to use it. Kill and his staff put a lot of stuff in. They work on it. They don't blink about using this stuff. Abbott had a huge lead on the two cover men. The lead softened as the pass went up. But it was still a beauty for a TD. Everhart on the point after. He's only missed seven in his career. He nails that one. And the Dogs have a two-touchdown lead. 
Is Southern going to be alone in first place in the Gateway Conference after week seven? Southern at the 12-29 mark of the second quarter leads Northern Iowa 14 to nothing. Hello, I'm Coach Jerry Kill of SIU Saluki's football team. More than 350,000 Americans live with multiple sclerosis, a devastating disease of the central nervous system. Please help me and the Salukis tackle MS by pledging the Scoring Against MS campaign. Your pledge per point the Saluki score will help fund research and programs for people coping with MS. To pledge the Scoring Against MS campaign, visit www.msillinois.org or call 1-888-343-343. 1179. Hello again, folks. This is Rob Cash at E.N. Baker, Chevrolet, Cadillac, and Marion, where the good news just keeps on coming from General Motors. GM gives us another huge boost with the announcement of 0% financing on all new 2003 Chevrolets and Cadillacs. Just take your pick of any new 2003 Chevy or Cadillac on our lot, and you get 0% GMAC financing for 36 months or 3.9% for 60 months at E.N. Baker, Chevrolet, Cadillac, in Marion. Hart's kickoff now, and it comes to Sanderson at the 1. He drops it. It's loose at the 12, still diving, and he falls on it at the 16-yard line with Smith right on him for SIU as Sanderson kicked the ground ball from the 1-yard line out to the 16. He and did. the Saluki defense back on the field. Once he muffed it, though, he did the right thing. I thought he was going to try to scoop it, Mike. He just fell on the football and took some punishment, but Northern Iowa retains possession of the ball. The ball is at the 16-yard line, and Petrie on for Northern Iowa with the UNI offense. He's played this season, but this is his first start. Only 15 of 38 passing coming into this game and hasn't thrown it well in limited action here today. Now down by two touchdowns, they shift to shotgun. Two receivers left, two right. Here's Petrie to throw. He has plenty of time all day to throw. He throws it long. He overshot Mays at the 40-yard line. Incomplete. It's second down, 10 yards to go with a penalty marker down in the Northern Iowa backfield. And the penalty is a hold on Northern Iowa. Defense is playing well, Coach Kill. Maybe that's why he had so much time to throw the football. Good coverage downfield and defense playing pretty well. Would they turn down a holding penalty and set up second down 10? The officials are discussing it. Alexis Moreland and Eric Egan are in there. The Saluki defensive captains. Nope, they're going to step it off. And if Kill was listening to us. <laughs> Holding on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. He would either say, now, Mock, they're not playing that well. Or he'd say, if you want to coach, you come on down here. <laughs> two receivers to the left side, two to the right side. Lead to 26 for a first down. Petrie directly under center this time. Southern with a four-man rush, and they run the ball. And Benj said one, but not another. They run to the 11. A gain of only two, and it's second down coming up. Ran to the 11 where he met Southern's linebackers. Again, Royal Whitaker and Eric Egan on the stop. Northern Iowa averaging 345 yards per game. Is sixth in the league in rushing, although it has the number three rusher and seventh in the league in passing efficiency. And so its offensive problems continuing against the Saluki club that's allowed 100 points the last two weeks so far pitching a shutout. Second and 14, Petrie to throw. Has time, now pulls it down, rolling right. Steps back, Lionel Williams is chasing. Hits him as he throws. It's intercepted on the boundary by McBerry. Do they rule he was in? They rule. The official's looking right at it. Hasn't signaled yet. They still haven't signaled yet. The officials haven't signaled a word. McBerry picked it off, and they're going to say that he was out of bounds. That was as indecisive as officiating can be. Two officials were looking right at it. The one just ran up to the play, never signaled anything, and the other signaled very late. Well, he stepped right up in front of the oh, pass man. nicely. He must have just barely been out of bounds over there. Southern sets up third and 15. It may be the right call, but was a very, very indecisive call. All right, let's see if the Dogs can shut it down on third down. Northern Iowa's one for four in third down conversions. Dogs lead it 14 to nothing. Trying to gain sole possession of first place in the gateway. Petrie is in shotgun. Here he is to throw from the two. Has plenty of time. Up the shoot. Mays caught it at the 26 and then fumbled it. Southern signaling the pass shouldn't be complete. And again now it's signaled by the umpire. Boy, the officials 
with late signals. They may be getting them right, but they got a little bit of a coffee break before they signal them. It's fourth down. Southern keeps you and I at one for five on third down conversions, and Petrie is not throwing the ball well. No, he's not. Retreat, receiver tried to pick him up with a sliding catch, but he had a lot of time to throw once again, and he's just not getting it there. Russell, join us in a second with the first bank and trust scoreboard. Northern Iowa's Frost is standing one yard deep in the end zone. Southern's going to go after him. The rush is on. Here's the punt. He gets it out of there. It's very, very high. It is George up at midfield. Grabs it. Runs to the 45 to the 40. 35 near sideline. Head down to the 30-yard line. And a Northern Iowa player gave up on it because he thought, apparently, that George had signaled a fair catch. But he did. There's a penalty marker down. Maybe he did signal fair catch. That was a tough, that was a tough catch, too. He had to move to his right, and the ball was punted so high. Now Chuck Feeney, the referee, is coming over to the sideline to talk to a Saluki player. Now steps back, and here's his call. Got a halo violation on the kicking team. Decline. First down. I thought Southern was the only team that did that. Gene. <laughs> First Bank and Trust Company scoreboard, banking with local advantage. First Bank and Trust Company of Murfreesboro. They have roots in Murfreesboro. Russell Check scores after this play. Ryan McAllister, tight left. Wide to the left side goes Courtney Abbott. Wide to the right side goes Jason Hollingshed. The running backs are Robinson and Muhammad. The ball's at the 30-yard line of UNI. And it's a give to uh, Robinson, and he piles to the 28-yard line. Here's Russ with the first bank and trust company scores. Thank you, Mike. In the gateway, Western Kentucky 42, Florida International nothing at halftime. 24-3, Youngstown State leads Florida Atlantic seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Halftime from Macomb, Western Illinois 12, Illinois State 3. Southwest Missouri State hit a bump in the road. They trail by seven in Terre Haute to Indiana State 14-7. And at halftime, Cal leads USC 21-17. At halftime, ten, uh, Texas Tech 3, Iowa State 3 in the second quarter. LSU 13, Florida nothing. Back to you, Mike. Second down, 8. Dogs are at the 28-yard line. Sam Bursky directly under center. There's the snap. Northern Iowa blitzes. They pick it up. Rolling to the right side, Joel throws. Low grab by McAllister. Great catch and an even better throw to the 24-yard line. He threw it the only place he could throw to complete that pass. Banking with local advantage. First Bank and Trust Company of Murfreesboro. They have roots in Murfreesboro. Sam McAllister double covered in that play. It's a great catch by him, and now Sam Bursky, seven out of eight in the air. It's third down and four. Southern four yards shy of another first cellular first down. 10-10 to play until the Golden Corral halftime. Crowd's grown a little bit now. It's upwards of 13,000. Southern doing good work for this crowd so far. Leads it 14 to nothing. Pro eye set for the dogs on third down and four. Sam Bursky ready to take Fritzler's snap. There it is. Draw play to Muhammad. Cuts back running room 20. He might score. 15. 10. Got a block to the end zone. Touchdown. Jason Hollingshed held off his man. And Muhammad gets his biggest run. And he gets within one touchdown of the school record for rushing touchdowns in the season. Muhammad Abdul Kadir just scored his 16th touchdown of the year, his 15th on the ground, and Southern has a three touchdown lead over Northern Iowa. 57 yards rushing now for Muhammad Abdul Kadir, and look what happens when Southern completes seven out of eight passing, a couple of quick passes, opens up a seam, he scores a touchdown on the ground. Here's Everhart on the point after. Southern leads it 20 to nothing. Abbott is the holder. Good snap and spot. The kick is up, and it is good. And how about this news from Billy Mack's place? Southern Illinois University, 21. Northern Iowa, nothing. 710 Bookstore is ready for a great season of Saluki football. This year, join 710 for all the excitement as the Salukis play under the lights. Whether it's under the lights or under the sun, 710 is what you need. Officially licensed sweatshirts, jackets, T-shirts, jewelry, golf accessories, hats, and more. Suit up for a new season at 710 Bookstore. At the game, on the strip, or the World Wide Web at 710.com. Spell it out. 710 Bookstore, the place for everything Saluki. 710 on the strip, Carbondale. Hi, I'm Daryl Phillips with Century 21. I'm a residential real estate specialist working with buyers and sellers in all of Southern Illinois. As a full-time realtor and having lived in Southern Illinois all my life, I know the local real estate market. So if your plans include buying or selling a home, call Century 21 and ask for Daryl Phillips. Having achieved master's agent status with Century 21, I have the experience needed in today's real estate market. With my help, sellers find buyers and buyers find homes. 
King Muhammad's run for a touchdown. He's thrown for a touchdown, and Southern Illinois University leads Northern Iowa, the 10-time Gateway Conference champion, 21 to nothing. Here is the kickoff by Everhart. It is end over end. Sanderson returnable from the 8. He's to the 10. He's to the 15. He's to the 20. To the 25, and down he goes. James Smith was in on the uh, hit. No, I'm sorry, it wasn't James Smith. It was 41, not 47. It was Paul Wright, the freshman out of Cincinnati. As Mr. Chu from DeSoto, who is the one of the McDonald's Magic 95.1 honorary captains, retrieves the tee. Austin Chu from DeSoto. SIU, in its last six quarters of play, has scored 75 points. It has also allowed 52 in its last six quarters, but none in the this two quarters of this game. And here's Petrie off play action. Nope, they've changed. And now Petrie is back to throw. Long up the side. And grab by Mays at the 35 to the 30. He foot race to the 20. Near sideline to the 15 to the 10. Gadsden hauls him down from behind. It's first and goal for Northern Iowa. That time Petrie was on target. And the Panthers come right back. And they're at the five-yard line first and goal. So a big pass play for Northern Iowa of some 75 yards. Gives them the ball at the five-yard line where it's first and goal. So the dogs defense now, which has been stingy with yards so far and has allowed no points, has its back against the wall here as you and I hops up with a big play. 69 yarder, only the second pass completion on the game for Petrie. Two tights, running back Cern and I. Mutart's in there at fullback, and it's a handoff to Benz. He's trying to get off left end. Southern's there. It's a two yard loss back of the seven yard line, and Southern is doing a good job here against the run. Matt Scheffler out of Springfield was in on the hit along with Andre Rockwell, who got the start tonight. It is second down and goal from the seven-yard line at the 9.05 mark of the first half. Dogs lead it 21 to nothing, but Northern Iowa is in Saluki territory. In the red zone, too, and only one time this year has Southern kept its opponent from scoring once it reached the red zone this year. There's the snap. Petrie to throw. Looking left. Pump fake. Throws into the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown. It's still only one time this year as he threw to Ben Sanderson from seven yards out. And that has to be a big boost for Tom Petrie as he threw seven yards to Ben Sanderson. And it's a 21-6 ball game with Homebrecker on for the point after. First touchdown passing on the season for Petrie. First reception for a touchdown on the season by Ben Sanderson. This is the all-conference place kicker, Austin Homebrecker on the point, or Mackenzie Homebrecker, and he kicks out of Frost, the punter's hole. Everybody ready? Good snap and spot. The kick is up by Homebrecker, and he missed it. It's 21-6. to six. That's his first miss of the season and the eighth in his career. And a break goes to Saluki's way, and they only get six on that touchdown. 21 to 6 is the score at the MAC, and we'll be back in a minute. What were you expecting to pay for a new SUV? $20,000? $30,000? $40,000? Not at Ike Auto Park. You can drive home in a new 2002 Kia Sportage priced at only $13,995. How? We are Southern Illinois' number one import dealer, and with huge customer cashback offers on all 2002 Kias, prices couldn't be any better. All new Kias come with an industry-leading long-haul warranty. 10 years or 100,000 miles. See Ike Auto Park for all the details. Two miles east of University Mall in Carbondale. And remember, you don't have the right price, so you have Ike's price. Steak lovers, Golden Corral has news for you. All-you-can-eat sirloin steaks every single day. No, you're not dreaming. Monday through Saturday after 4 p.m. and Sunday after 11 a.m., help yourself to all the juicy, tender sirloin you want. Plus, other buffet favorites like rotisserie chicken, tons of hot vegetables like made-from-scratch mashed potatoes, and fresh-baked desserts. And it's just $7.99. The Great Steak Dinner Buffet every day, only at Golden Corral, Route 13 east of Carbondale, next to the Hampton Inn. Well, the 21-point lead lasted for one minute. Northern Iowa rolled the field, missed the point after. It's 21-6, to six and Frost kicks it off. It is returnable, I think. Nope, it's four yards now, five yards deep, and Southern's Gadsden stays home, and Southern's offense heads to the field at the 20-yard line. The Golden Corral halftime is upcoming. So is SIU Alumni Association trivia on the Golden Corral halftime. Russell visit with Saluki Hoops coach Bruce Weber. SIU alumni students and friends are invited to enjoy the, enjoy the privileges of membership in SIU's Alumni Association. 
Members receive special discounts on SIU apparel at local stores, restaurants, discounts, nationwide car rental, and hotel discounts. Members also receive the Southern Alumni, the Alumni Association's quarterly magazine. Memberships only $45 per year. There are lifetime plans available. Join the SIU Alumni Association. Sam Bursky takes the snap, and they run Muhammad, who stumbles but gets to the corner anyway. Sheds the tackle to the 20, but to the 23 he goes, and down he goes. It's a gain of about uh, three. You can call the SIU Alumni Association, 618-453-2408, or you can visit SIU Alumni Association's website, www.siualumni.com. People listening in in central Illinois next weekend in Illinois State will have a pregame tailgate outside of the stadium up there before we play Illinois State. Second down, eight yards to go. The Dogs and the Redbirds play at 1.30 to open a three-game road swing for Southern. We'll be on the air at 1 o'clock. Gene will join us about 1.25 after the tailgate. <laughs> Here's Sam Bursky in the shotgun. Second and eight, jogging right. He's looking to throw, looking, holding, setting, throwing, low. Grabbed by Montez. So they're going to rule it a catch at the 42-yard line. You bet they are. Joel Sambersky is throwing the ball low into the boundary when he has to throw it low into the boundary. And Cipriano Montez took one off the carpet, and it's good for a first down, another first cellular first down. He's running to his right. Difficult to really throw the ball exactly where you want it when you're on the move the way he was. But Montez with a nice catch, first down Southern. Dogs have it at the 43-yard line. First Cellular makes a contribution to the Saluki Athletic Scholarship Fund for every Saluki football first down this year and every SIU basketball three-point field goal. Three receivers to the left side. Tight end goes to the right side. It's McAllister. And in shotgun, it is a brown play. And Sambersky keeps it off right guard and runs to the 46. He wanted to hand it to Muhammad. Muhammad wanted to run off left end, and they didn't get together on that play. But the broken play results in Sambersky's biggest run. It's a four-yard gain for Joel, and it's second and six. 7-10 to play before the Golden Corral halftime. SIU Alumni Association trivia is coming up. Chance for you to win a free T-shirt from the SIU Alumni Association. I'm Mike Reese, Gene Green alongside. We're at the MAC. It's family uh, weekend here. Looks like a crowd maybe at 12 or 13,000 here. Line out to either side. Tight end on the right side. Joel's in shotgun. On second down, here he is to throw to the sideline. Caught drop. It's dropped by Brent Little, who caught a touchdown pass last week. It's only the second incomplete pass thrown by Sam Bursky. He dropped it at the UNI 49, and it's third down, six yards to go. He had a little room to run after he caught the football, and I think that was the problem. He was getting ready to turn before he caught the ball. Southern's banged up at that wide receiver spot, most notably Kellen Allen. It's a big loss. He was really hadn't thrown to him a whole lot, Mike, but it seemed like every time they threw the pass to him, he came away with it, a big guy with a lot of speed, and they were really excited the way he was coming along. He was the deep threat. Third down coming up. Six yards to go. Northern Iowa's going to rush five. Here's a draw play to Muhammad, and he runs right into the rush, and it's no gain. In fact, maybe even a yard loss. And it brings up fourth down, and Everhart will punt for SIU. I think anything tonight is going to be out around the ends. It doesn't look like there's any room up the middle against Northern Iowa at all. And they've shown good speed at that linebacker spot. So getting to the outside has been difficult. But Joel is throwing the ball well. That's been Southern's best offense so far in this game. Ben Sanderson is stepping back to his 20-yard line as Everhart, who hammered the heck out of the last one, is ready to try to hammer this one. He has almost the whole field to work with and no wind. Fourth down, there's the snap, and he gets it out of there. And it's Sanderson from the 16-yard line. He is hit. He is brought down right there. Nice special teams play, and Southern keeps Northern Iowa in poor field position as Chris McCullough was in on the hit. Russ will have scores for you. Russ will visit with Saluki basketball coach Bruce Weber coming up on the Golden Corral halftime. Just six minutes, one second of playing time from now. Ball's at the 17-yard line. It's SIU 21, Northern Iowa 7. The Panthers scored on their previous possession, then stopped Southern from scoring. And now the Panthers come back on as they try to get this thing within one touchdown before halftime. Southern led it 21 to nothing. Now it's 21 to 7. Two receivers to the right side, two receivers to the left side. Southern trying to beat this team for the seventh time ever in this ballpark. Southern is 6 and 4 lifetime against you and I here at the MAC. Four wideouts. In shotgun, it's Petrie. He has plenty of time. Throws it long up the middle for Mays. Rockwell picked it off. Rockwell stepped in front and picked it off on the 40-yard line. Andre Rockwell with the interception. Southern forces the turnover. There's a penalty marker down. It might be on Rockwell for a celebration. 
And it is on Southern. It's unsportsmanlike conduct on the celebration. I think that they're going to rule he taunted the Northern Iowa sideline. He flipped the ball up as soon as he okay. as he caught it, Mike. Kind of flipped it straight in the air. And I don't know if he perhaps said something on the other sideline. The interception will stand, but Southern's going to be penalized. And he danced a little bit as he looked at the Northern Iowa sideline. And Southern's going to be penalized for that, yet maintains possession of the ball. And Northern Iowa, trying to score on consecutive possessions, is turns the ball over as Petrie throws the interception. It is his third against Southern in two years. I'm not so certain Mays didn't have that ball, and Rockwell literally raked it out of his arms, Mike. It looked like it was caught by the Northern Iowa receiver almost, but Rockwell was right there as well, and he kind of spun and came away with the football. Southern now with much worse field position, but certainly still has the football starting out their own 45-yard line. Rockwell gets his first interception in this, his second year as a salute. He's out of Texas. Abbott goes to the right side. Nope, he's going to go to the left side with Brent Little and Brandon Robinson. In shotgun, it is Samberski. Southern trying to convert on points, and here is play action. Jogging right, it is Samberski. Heaves it, and it's incomplete. It is behind Little and Shia McAllister. Kind of threw that one off his heels, too. He was going backwards as he threw the football. It's second down and 10 as Samberski misfires. The Northern Iowa playing a little better defensively here over the last couple of minutes. Southern at the 549 mark trying to maintain a two-touchdown lead at the uh, intermission. He's now 7 out of 9 for 90 yards. Out of the ball game comes Hollingshed. Into the ball game comes Bucky. Second down, 10. Ball at the 45-yard line. Southern in its own territory following the Rockwell interception, the first turnover of this game. There's the snap and a handoff to Muhammad. Trying to get off left end. Northern Iowa's there again. They're going to smack him and then drop him back. And Northern Iowa's ready for Muhammad Abdul Qadir tonight, though he still has two touchdowns. The fans across the way think that Muhammad was roughed up on that play. They're trying to punish him a little bit. And no flags are thrown. And it's third down and long now for SIU. The Saluki secondary this season, while it's been ripped for 245 yards per game, is picking them off at a solid rate here so far. It is third down. That was Southern's 11th interception of the year. Lang, Gadsden, Berry, and Whitaker all have two apiece for the Salukis, and Payne and Moreland have one apiece, and now Rockwell has one. Three receivers left. Tight end right. It is third down and 10 yards to go. Low snap. Samberski has it in shotgun. Pulls it down. He's going to run. He steps up. Far sideline 50. 45 and Northern Iowa. Nope. He stopped at the 46. It's fourth down and one. Coach Kill, what are you going to do here? Fourth down and one. Ask Everhart to kill it inside the 20-yard line again or go for it on fourth down and one. He assembles the punt team on the near sideline. The offense is ready to huddle, and it's going to be a punt. We think. Everhart's coming into the ball game to punt it. Ten, half of his punts he's been able to kill inside the 21 this year. Inside the 20 this year. Sanderson back at the 10-yard line. Southern's faked a punt for a 67-yard touchdown run by Brandon Robinson. It is fourth down, one yard to go. 15 seconds on the play clock. Robinson calls the signals in this situation. And the Salukis... Either might try to draw them offside or might take a delay. Let's see. Nope, they're going to go ahead. They snap it back to Everhart. Rushes on. He gets the kick out of there. Didn't hit it well. Shanked it off to the left side and hopped outside of the 20-yard line. So it'll be about the 24. That wobble to the far boundary. He couldn't get it inside the 20. And Northern Iowa takes over the 24, and the Salukis don't do anything with the turnover. Well, that would have been nice to try to get that three-touchdown lead back. Time for the scoring summary brought to you by the Furniture King. Just east of the University Mall, Carbondale, Southern Illinois' largest furniture store. Brandon Robinson scored first for Southern, a 67-yard run on a fake punt. Muhammad abdul Kadir threw to Courtney Abbott, a 15-yard score. Then abdul Kadir rushed one from 24 yards out. Petrie to Sanderson, a 7-yard touchdown score for Northern Iowa's points. They missed an extra point. It's 21-6 in favor of SIU. Petrie is in shotgun on first and 10. It's a quarterback draw. Petrie pulls it down, breaks the tackle to the 25 to the 30, and runs to the 32-yard line. He gained about seven yards on that play. The scoring summary brought to you by the Furniture King, just east of the University Mall, Carbondale, Southern Illinois' largest furniture store. Southern's only missed on three passes in this game. Northern Iowa's missed on five. Petrie in there now is three of eight for 82 yards. 
Southern averaging seven yards per play. Northern Iowa, six. Two receivers to the right side, two receivers to the left side. That was a gain of eight officially for Petrie. It's second down and two. The Panthers are down by 15. There's the snap, and it's a handoff to Benj, and he tries to get off right end. Can't cuts back and gets the first down to the 36, where he's popped by McBerry. 37 is going to be the spot. Clock stops with 319 to play, and Southern would love to have a 14-point lead at the intermission here at McAndrew Stadium. Trying to beat these guys for the third straight year in Carbondale. They have lost their last six times at the Dome at Northern Iowa. But they've beaten these guys the last two trips for you and I to Carbondale. First and ten for the Panthers. Down by 15 points. There's the snap. Here he is to throw. Rushes on. And it's a screen to Benj who falls down at the 36-yard line. Lost four yards. It leads to second down and 14 yards to go. Benj's feet came out from underneath him as he got twisted with 2.49 to play in the first half. SIU Alumni Association trivia is coming up. A chance for you to win a free T-shirt from the SIU Alumni Association. Ball's back at the 26-yard line. See if the Salukis can uh, tee off here on Petrie. It's second down and long, second and 13. See if Tracy Clays and the boys here elect to blitz. McBerry's on the right side. Rockwell's on the left side. They do not blitz. And here he is with plenty of time. He throws it up the far sideline, wide open. Caught at the 45 to the 40. Cut back to the 35, and it's a first down to Sanderson. They did no pressure on the quarterback, and sitting in the middle of the zone defense was Sanderson on the far boundary. He found the seam, and Petrie found him, and Petrie's found his passing range. He's now four for nine. He turns to Ron Davidson around. He sold him that it was going to be a route that was going to come back across the middle, Mike, and he took it the other direction. Davidson out there for the first time in a while. He's got that injured hand, and was unable to bring him down once he caught the football. Two receivers to the left side, one receiver to the right side. There's the snap, and they give the ball to the fullback, and he runs to the 30-yard line and fumbled the ball, and Southern came away with it, I think, at the 34-yard line. Northern Iowa turned it over again. Well, if you're a top-12 team, you can't turn it over as much as Western last week and Northern Iowa this week have done against Southern. Ran the option, and as soon as he pitched the ball, Southern defense, I'm not sure who got the ball, Mike, but... They've been popping on defense out there, knocked the ball loose before he could get his hand on it. Southern gets the ball back about the 35-yard line and with two minutes left in the play. That's a big, big thing as far as momentum's concerned. Unofficially, Royal Whitaker came up with the ball. The ball's at the 35-yard line, and Samberski, number 12, heads into the Saluki huddle, and he has two minutes and two timeouts to work with here, ahead 21-6. to six. Oh, it'd be sweet to get a three-touchdown lead at halftime here as the dogs try to stay in first place and try, if Illinois State will lose, gain sole possession of first place. Hand off to the tailback. It's Muhammad busted. 40, 45. Oh, one tackle from a TD, and they brought him down. It's a 12-yard gain. He comes up, clapping his hands. He's ripped off two long runs. That was the second. A touchdown-saving tackle was made there by Justin Jansen, and the dogs have a first down at the 46-yard line. 12-yard game may not do much to him the last few games, but he's pretty happy with that one here tonight. He has that, and he has a 24-yard run. Those are 36 of his yards here tonight, and he has 70 yards still in the first half. Wideouts go to either side. Running backs are in an eye on first down. It's Muhammad. Off right guard. He got a block to the 50. Northern Iowa 49-yard line. All right. The old line's giving him a little running room here on two straight plays. About 17 yards on consecutive plays with 130 before halftime. So Muhammad runs for five. And Northern Iowa has shut him down better than anyone shut him down, Gene. And he still has 75 yards here in the second quarter. 75 yards. He's ran for a touchdown. He's passed for a touchdown. It just tells you how good he is, Mike. Abbott to the left side for Southern. Hollingshed to the right side. Quick count. Here he is to throw to the sideline. High. Oh, Hollingshed can't hold it at the 42-yard line. Ball slipped out of his hands. Yep. You could tell as soon as he threw the ball. And Joel's missed now on four passes in this ball game, and unofficially four out of his last five after missing only one of his first seven passes in this game. Clock stops 109 before the Golden Corral halftime. Ball game just over one hour old. Southern Illinois University leads it 21 to 6. Once again, Southern has not committed any turnovers. Northern Iowa's committed two, and Southern a little indecision there, and Joel takes a timeout. We'll break for a minute. 21 6, dogs at the MAC. We'll be back. Timeout, Southern Illinois. And we have a timeout on the field. 
If you are a seafood lover, you're going to love this. Prairie Land Seafood, the same company that sells high-quality, locally produced seafood to your favorite restaurants, is now selling to the public. That's right, you can take home and prepare the same seafood you order at the restaurant. Just think of the money you'll save. Pick up a box or buy in bulk from Prairie Land Seafood. Open Monday through Friday from 8 to 4 on Route 154, two miles east of the square in Pinckneyville. Or call Prairie Land Seafood at 357-FISH. Business person professional as a, the biggest problem face you day to day on a basis, lack of organization is. What need you some is organization. What need you is to back your life in order get. What need you? Shawnee Link Internet Service is the number one Shawnee Link usable, reliable for tools and resources employees for your website hosting, high speed internet access, long distance services, and more. Much, much. For a consultation, call 1 800 461 3956 or click on www.shawneelink.net. Now, right. After the game, we'll pick the top Saluki. It's the E.N. Baker Chevrolet Cadillac go to guy of the game. Brought to you by E.N. Baker Chevrolet Cadillac, New Route 13 East Marion. Ball is third down for Southern at the 48-49 of Northern Iowa. Option, it's a reverse. Brent Little has the ball trying to string to the left side. Being chased, got away. Got a block from McAllister to the 45 to the 40. Has a first down, and the Salukis run the end around, and the reverse to Brent Little runs to the 40-yard line of Northern Iowa, and the dogs get a first down. That's important in two things, Mike. Not only does it give Southern a chance to continue this drive and possibly score, but now with 58 seconds left, barring a turnover, they're not going to have to give the ball back. A first cellular first down for the dogs, and Sambersky and company trying to at least get a field goal here right before halftime. Ball's at the 41-yard line. There is the snap. Here he is to throw. Rushes on hit as he throws. Caught by Muhammad at the 38. Runs to the 35. Down to the 32-yard line. He needs the 31 for a first down. The Salukis have one timeout remaining. 49 seconds left. Clock rolling. It is second down. One yard to go. The Salukis get to the line of scrimmage. Mike Fritzler. Ready to snap it as Sambersky is in shotgun. It's second down, about a yard and a half to go. 35 seconds to play in the half. Salukis have one timeout. It's second down and short. Option. It is a toss play. It's Muhammad. He is hit behind the line and brought down at the 35-yard line. And Southern's going to take a timeout right here. We'll keep it here with 25 seconds left in the half. Not sure what that play was supposed to be. They ran to the short side of the field. and that Time had out. Southern Illinois. Third and final timeout of the half. That play had very little chance of succeeding just because there wasn't enough room to run it. And even if Sambersky had kept it, he likely would not have been able to pick up a first down. They lost a couple, and it's third down and four and a half yards to go. And the Salukis huddle on the sideline. For the NFL games tomorrow, we recommend Muggsy's. SIU's official pre- and post-game headquarters, 1620 West Main Carbondale. Has all the NFL games. It starts at noon. Mr. Muggsy, Matt Meyer and company, have it set up for you on Sundays. For the NFL games, Muggsy McGuire's Carbondale. If you have a ticket to Rick Derringer, can you just stay there tonight if you're going to watch football there tomorrow? Or? <laughs> I don't think that's what he had in mind when he put together the entertainment center, Gene. But maybe that's a special package. <laughs> Sleep over it, no, Muggsy. That, that's called a hotel. <laughs> We've heard that from Golconda to Salem, all the hotels are booked here on Family Weekend at SIU. Two receivers to the left side, now three with Robinson. No timeouts for the Dogs, 25 seconds left. They'd like another first down here. From here, it's a 52-yard field goal attempt. Awaiting the snap and shotgun at Sambersky, and he has it. Back to throw, pump fake, draws back wide, tight end screen to McAllister, 35. Ryan trying to get to the hash does, to the 30, and he's got a first down for the Dogs with 16 seconds left. They stop the clock now, 15 seconds remaining. That was crucial they get the first down because it stops the clock. Gene, they just put that play in this week. McAllister's first catch of this game is his first is his sixth catch of the season. First down from the 30-yard line, 15 seconds left. Southern does not have any timeouts, leads 21-6, to six, trying to at least get a field goal here. There's the snap, and he kills the clock with 13 seconds left. Well, he had a long time there. Uh Uh-oh, Schumacher's hurt. Zach Schumacher, the Carterville product, is having some trouble with his right arm, and he's in a little bit of pain, though he's staying in there right now. Sambersky spiked the ball. 13 seconds left. They ended up with more time at the line of scrimmage before Feeney blew the play in. And then perhaps they thought they were going to get, and Sambersky's plan was to spike it. From here, it's a 47-yard field goal attempt. Southern leads it 21-6, right before the Golden Corral halftime. McAllister tight on the left side. Wide to the left side, it's Abbott. Wide to the right side, it's Little. 
Her backs are split. Samberski directly under center, takes the snap, short drop, throws it a fade. It's for Abbott at the five, and it's over the shot. Incomplete, and it's third down and ten with nine seconds left. Well, let's see if they elect to try to run it here, Gene, to the middle of the field and set up a field goal. Schumacher's shaking up. He wants out of the ball game. Well, they and they're going to go for it right now. Well, they can't run it. They can't stop yeah, the clock. because they can't stop the clock. You're right, Gene. Schumacher wanted out anyway. He's banged up. And Everhart, coming off his best game as a Saluki, is going to try now for his 35th field goal of his career. He is 4 for 7 this year. His longest is 48. This is a 47-yard field goal from the left hash. Trying to put the Salukis up by 18. Everybody ready. Good snap and spot. He's got plenty of leg from 47. Everhart, nope. Missed it to the right side. It's no good. And the ball goes over to Northern Iowa, and the Salukis do nothing points-wise with either of UNI's turnovers here in the second quarter. You know, you look right now, that's where that penalty starting out that drive hurt Southern. Perhaps they get a little bit closer. It would have been an easier field goal try that he would have been able to hit. But Southern... Getting the fumble back, Mike, at least thwarts the scoring effort as you and I was driving the field, and now with just four seconds left, they can take a pretty decent lead into halftime. Northern Iowa huddles on the four, far sideline. Coming up, it's the Golden Corral halftime. Bruce Weber will be here. He'll visit with Russ Eisenstein. Russ, I'll have all the scores for you. The Cardinals won today. Minnesota and Anaheim playing right now on first down. Petrie directly under center, and they run the ball. In the final play of the half, it's Benj, and he runs to the 36. And we've come to the end of the first half, and a Saluki defense that has allowed 100 points the last two weeks allows 12th-ranked Northern Iowa only six first-half points here tonight. And the Dogs are halfway to their first 2-0 gateway conference start since 1991. They lead Northern Iowa 21-6 at halftime. We'll be back with the Golden Corral halftime after these messages. It's from the SIU Alumni Association. Who uh, holds the SIU record for 100-yard games rushing? Who holds the SIU career record for 100-yard games rushing? Our email address is godogs at shawneelink.net, G-O-D-A-W-G-S at shawneelink.net. Be the first to email us. We've had a couple guesses, but they've been wrong. First to email us with the correct answer. Gets a free T-shirt from the SIU Alumni Association. The Golden Corral Halftime brought to you by the Golden Corral, America's number one family buffet. It's open in Carbondale. Gene and I will be back with the second half play-by-play after these messages. It's time once again for SIU Alumni Association Night at Shryock Auditorium, Friday, December 6th. Alumni members are invited to a holiday dinner at the old main room of the SIU Student Center, followed by a special presentation of Christmas from Dublin, starring the three Irish tenors. A limited number of dinner reservations and discounted tickets are available for SIU Alumni Association members. Call 453-2408 to reserve your tickets and join the SIU Alumni Association at Shryock Auditorium on Friday, December December 6th, SIU Football is sponsored in part by Muggsy McGuire's. Before and after the game, it's Muggsy's in Carbondale. By Budweiser, the king of beers. Hey, Saluki fans, this Bud's for you. By the SIU Alumni Association, 200,000 alums proudly supporting Saluki Athletics. By Wright Do It Center in Murfreesboro and Sparta, making all your home dreams come true. And by Prairie Land Seafood Pickneyville, selling fresh catfish, shrimp, and more direct to you. This is SIU Football. No, Coach Weber, you can't win the T-shirt. Got to answer the question. Coach Weber knew the answer to the T-shirt, and I know he won't log on and answer the question. <laughs> I know he won't email us. <laughs> yeah, tell him he can't be in person. You have to use that computer. I'm Mike Reese, Gene Green alongside. Southern Illinois University won the uh, coin toss to open this uh, game, and now will uh, benefit by uh, getting the ball to start the second half. And the uh, Salukis, who lead 21 to 6 here at the intermission, will get the ball to start the third quarter. And you'd feel a little better, wouldn't you, Gene, if 
Joel and Muhammad and company could add some more points. It would have been nice, but I felt better anyway, Mike, when SIU was able to force a fumble around the 30-yard line and get the ball back because it appeared that Northern Iowa was about to drive the field and cut into the lead even more, but Southern still has that 21-6 lead. SIU's defense really stepped it up nicely. We talked about the active play by the linebackers, especially in the first half. Try to keep that up, see what adjustments both of these clubs make, but Southern's going to get the football first. And the dogs await Derek Frost's kickoff here to start the second half. The Salukis open a three-game road swing next week. They play at Illinois State. Gene and I will be on the air at 1 o'clock. The SIU Alumni Association has a pregame tailgate up there at Hancock Stadium. So we hope to see you there. On the return, it is Brandon Robinson on the far side, Chris Gadsden on the near side. It's end over end. Frost hit this well, and B-Rob's going to stay home and bring it out of the 20-yard line. So, Samberski and company, well, up by 15 points. How about an 80-yard drive? Used about seven minutes. And let King Muhammad tie the school record for touchdown, rushing touchdowns in one season. He's one so shy of that. He is four points shy of the school record for most points in one season. This is only going to be his fifth full game. You know, it's been rough sledding for him, but he still has, as we've talked before, 73 yards in the ground. He's thrown a touchdown pass of 14 yards, so he's been a big part of this game, even though he has been held in check. Running back, Stern and I, he's the tailback, and whistles and flags before the first play. As Joel pulled out from center, second half starting lineups brought to you by Saturn of Carbondale. Here's referee Chuck Feeney. Dead ball, full start on the offense, five yards, still first down. Second half starters for the dogs brought to you by Saturn of Carbondale. No haggle, no hassle for you or anyone. Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. Joel Samberski at quarterback. The center is Mike Fritzler. His guards are Zach Schumacher and Matt Miller with Brian Aikens at one tackle spot and Bryce Schaefer at the other. The lineup's brought to you by Saturn of Carbondale. No haggle, no hassle for you or anyone. Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. Hand off to Muhammad, off left end. Right end, rather, goes to the 20. Breaks the tackle near sideline, 25 to the 30. 35, got a block to the 40. Out to the 45 and out of bounds. And a good block by Courtney Abbott on the near boundary. Help Muhammad get 10 more yards, and it's a first down for SIU. And how long did Abbott stay on that block? I mean, he he worked that thing. He was on it from about the time Muhammad from, was from about the 30-yard line all the way up to around the 40. He stayed on his man. and A nice run to start off with a 28-yard gain for Abdul Qadir. We have a winner in SIU Alumni Association trivia. It's Dominic Balavo. He's listening to us in Chatham. He knows Tom Kutsos. Injured out for the year, holds the Saluki record for 100-yard rushing games. He has 17 of them in his career before that broken arm and wrist knocked him down in game two of the year. Touchdown Tommy is the answer to the question. Dominic Balava gets a free T-shirt from the SIU Alumni Association. First down from the 43, three receivers left. Samberski doesn't like the formation. He has to burn a timeout. Timeout! Southern Illinois. We'll break for a minute. Back to the Mac in 60 seconds. Hello again, folks. This is Rob Cash at E.N. Baker, Chevrolet, Cadillac, and Marion, where the good news just keeps on coming from General Motors. GM gives us another huge boost with the announcement of 0% financing on all new 2003 Chevrolets and Cadillacs. Just take your pick of any new 2003 Chevy or Cadillac on our lot, and you get 0% GMAC financing for 36 months or 3.9% for 60 months. At E.N. Baker, Chevrolet, Cadillac in Marion. Go. Hey, Saluki fans. Go crazy! You've got Saluki pride? Show it. Flaunt it. Tell the world you love the dogs at Saluki Central on the Strip in Carbondale. T-shirts, sweatshirts, polos, button-downs, custom gifts, glassware, everything you need to show your Greek and Saluki pride. It's the largest and most eclectic selection of Saluki stuff in Southern Illinois. So before you go to the game, grab some new Saluki gear from Saluki Central on the Strip in Carbondale. If you love the Salukis, go crazy at Saluki Central. Following the Saluki timeout, it's first down. Dogs at their own 43-yard line. There's the snap. Draw play to Muhammad. He runs off right guard to the 45. Sheds two tackles at 50. 45 to the 40. Sheds another tackle. 35-30 might score. One man with an angle. 25-20. 15-10-5. TD Muhammad. And he ties the single-season record for rushing touchdowns. Hang on. It might come back. It's back at the 15-yard line, and it's on Southern, and it's on Brian Akins. 
because two of his offensive line teammates, seniors Mike Fritzler and Bryce Schaefer, are chewing the heck out of Aikens, and so is Sam Bursky. And it's again, Mike, it's way behind the play. Yep. It didn't help a thing. It cost the Salukis a touchdown. Wait a minute. Hold on. Robinson signaling it's going to be a touchdown. And here's Feeney. It's a personal foul on Southern. What are you doing there, Brandon? Wishful thinking. Personal foul on Brian Akins. And it's a touchdown. It's after the play. It's after the play. So Muhammad's touchdown holds up. And he does have the school record for rushing touchdowns in one season. And he did it in five games. Dead ball. Personal foul on the offense. After the touchdown, it'll be assessed on the extra point. And for the second time, Everhart has to try a long extra point. When's the last time you saw this? Twice this'll, in a ball game. This will be his second 35-yard extra point of the night. It's out of Abbott's hold. He made the first one. Now, how about the second one? Everybody ready. Ranella snaps it. It's a good snap and spot. The kick gets up. It's long enough from 35, and he got it. He's two for two on 35-yard extra point. Got a boy. Southern's up to a three-touchdown lead again. It's 28 to six, and back to the MAC after this. 710 Bookstore is ready for a great season of Saluki football. This year, join 710 for all the excitement as the Salukis play under the lights. Whether it's under the lights or under the sun, 710 is what you need. Officially licensed sweatshirts, jackets, t-shirts, jewelry, golf accessories, hats, and more. Suit up for a new season at 710 Bookstore. At the game, on the strip, or the World Wide Web at 710.com. Spell it out. 710 Bookstore, the place for everything Saluki. 710 on the strip, Carbondale. Good food and a good mood. Moxie Mug Wise. You never tasted anything quite like lip smacking food, Moxie style. It will fill your heart's desire. So drop by Moxie Mug Wise. A good food and a good mood. Moxie Mug Here's Everhart to kick it off after King Muhammad broke two records with his second rushing touchdown of the night. And it's end over end, and it's Sanderson from the three. He's to the five, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, and is pushed out of bounds at the 23-yard line, and the dogs take over there. Muhammad abdul Qadir, a 57-yard touchdown run. We asked for an 80-yard drive. We got it, Gene. We asked, I asked for it to take seven minutes. <laughs> Not quite as long. It took 26 seconds. It went two plays. It went 80 yards. And Muhammad abdul Qadir with 106 points this year. That's a single-season scoring record. It broke Carlton Carpenter's record that he set in 1998. I thought that was a pretty good record, Jim, and it is. But Muhammad toppled it in five games. Three receivers right, one receiver left. In shotgun now. Here he is to throw. It's Petrie, and he throws a quick out to Sanderson at the 29, and he stepped out of bounds. He gained about uh, six yards, and it's second down. SIU has a 22-point lead on Northern Iowa, trying to beat a second straight top 12 team. And Southern's been a good second-half team this year, outscoring its opponents 154 to 80. You remember it was a year ago. But Southern was a miserable second-half team, especially in the fourth quarter. Two receivers to the right side, two receivers to the left side. But as you know, this game is far from over. Second down and four. And a busted play, and Petrie's going to be dropped back at the 25-yard line by Lionel Williams and Eric Egan. They team up on a nice hit after a busted play. Petrie thought his running back was going to take the handoff, but he didn't. And Petrie ran for his life and lost three yards, and it's third down and eight. And Southern is 16 minutes of playing time away from beating back-to-back top 12 teams and having at least a share of first place in the Gateway Conference. It's third down and seven. Two receivers right, one receiver left. From shotgun, it's Petrie. Blitz is on, they pick it up, they throw to the sideline. One hop to Mays, and they're going to say it's a catch, I think. Yes. I don't think that that was called correctly. But it's a catch ruled anyway to the 37-yard line. It looked like from our vantage point, it went one hop off the carpet. But Mays gets credit for the catch. And Marlis Mays now has 
his first reception of the second half and his second reception of this game and his 27th reception of the season. And Northern Iowa picks up a first down. Petrie had some pressure, was hit, rising through the ball. You wondered if the ball was ever going to get there. It was a wobbler. First down for the Panthers. They're at their own 37-yard line, and they lead it. Uh, they trail in it 28-6. to six. Two receivers to the right side. Two receivers. Now Petrie's unsure, and he calls timeout. Let's break for a minute. And it's 28 to Time 6. Out. Southern. Northern Iowa. In the hustle and bustle of this fast-paced world, it's good to know there are some things still worth sitting down for. A hot, delicious, homemade breakfast from Larry's Pit Barbecue is one thing that's so good, you just can't rush it. Scrambled eggs, sausage, bacon, pancakes, and maple syrup, hash brown potatoes, all with a hot cup of coffee and a smile. Now, you could get it to go if you want, but why hurry? Come on in, pull up a chair, and remember breakfast all over again at Larry's Pit Barbecue, Christopher DuCoin and Carbondale. Let's go to Larry's, a proud sponsor of the Salukis. What were you expecting to pay for a new SUV? $20,000? $30,000? $40,000? Not at Ike Auto Park. You can drive home in a new 2002 Kia Sportage priced at only $13,995. How? We are Southern Illinois' number one import dealer and with huge customer cashback offers on all 2002 Kias, prices couldn't be any better. All new Kias come with an industry-leading long-haul warranty. 10 years or 100,000 miles. See Ike Auto Park for all the details. Two miles east of University Mall in Carbondale. And remember, you don't have the right price, so you have Ike's price. First Bank and Trust Company's scoreboard, banking with local advantage. First Bank and Trust Company of Murfreesboro. They have roots in Murfreesboro. Russell Check scores after this play. It's first and 10 for Northern Iowa at the 38-yard line. Opening two minutes of the third quarter. Southern in command, 28-6. to six. All kinds of time to play. Four-man front. Egan is showing blitz off right edge and does. Here he is to throw. they got a blitz on. McBerry has him back at the 35-yard line. Cortez McBerry came on the blitz off the end and nailed it. And it's a loss of three, and it's second down and 13 yards to go. Here's Russ. All right, Mike, in the bottom of the seventh inning, game four between Minnesota and Anaheim, scoreless. There's only five hits in the ball game. Scoreless between the Twins and the Angels in the Gateway Conference. Western Kentucky leads Florida International in the third quarter, 42 to nothing. Youngstown State, 24. Florida Atlantic, 17. The Owls sticking around. Western Illinois, 15. Illinois State, 10. In the middle of the fourth quarter, Southwest came back to take the lead, 17-14, middle of the third quarter. Also, uh, Indiana State leads Southwest Missouri State. That's the final score in the gateway. Back to you, Mike. Our rush, two receivers left, one receiver right. Running back, Cern and I now for you and I. It's a four-man front for SIU option. It is Petrie. He's keeping, eludes one, and dives for about three yards. Russ's score is brought to you by First Bank and Trust Company of Murfreesboro. Banking with local advantage. First Bank and Trust has roots in Murfreesboro. It's third down for Northern Iowa, moving right to left here in the third quarter. Third down, eight yards to go. After the ball game, it's Muggsy's. Rick Derringer is playing at Muggsy's after the game tonight at Muggsy's new entertainment center. He might be here right now. Two receivers to the left side, one receiver to the right side. Some of the crowd on its feet. Petrie and shotgun. Southern trying to shut it down. Showing blitz. Here they come with Morton on the blitz. They pick it up. They throw it long to the far sideline. High. Incomplete at the 45-yard line. Incomplete. And it's fourth down. Good coverage over there by Steron Davidson, who's basically playing with only a left arm. Davidson's over there to knock down passes. They're afraid it's going to be very difficult for him to do much in the way of tackling, Mike. But he can certainly do a lot as far as defending the pass. How about this defense? The Saluki D here has put up only, allowed only six points after allowing 100 the previous two weeks. Fourth down and eight, and Frost to punt it for Northern Iowa. At its own 40-yard line, there is the snap. Southern going after him, came close. Boy, Rockwell comes so close, might have got a piece of it. That's a wobbler to the 30, takes a great hop, and then hops out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. 24 will be the spot, and that's where Joel Samberski and company will go first and 10. The easiest call you'll make this weekend is breakfast or lunch with a twist. Big portions, small prices, right up Gene Green's alley. Harbaugh's, <laughs> Southern's newest tradition on the south end of the Strip, Carbondale. Actually, you prefer those places with small portions and big prices? Oh, yeah, I'm trying to watch my weight. <laughs> Balls at the 24-yard line. Harbaugh's is good. Harbaugh's Cafe on the Strip, Carbondale. Wide receiver to the right side, wide receiver to the left side. Robinson and Muhammad are the running backs from the 24-yard line. There's the snap, handoff, it goes to Robinson, breaks the tackle to the 30, cuts back, broke another one, 35-40, he might score. Up the far boundary, Robinson, 45-40, 35-30, got a block from Hollyshead to the 20, to the 15, and hauled down from behind. 
penalty marker is down, and I think Hollingshed's block was illegal. I don't know, Mike. He stayed on that block a long time, and he worked, he worked, he worked to get in the proper position to make that last block. That's going to be a tough call if it's against him because it was not blatant at all. Hollingshed is going to be called for an illegal block. It sprung Robinson for 15 more yards, and it's going to take uh, some of the yardage off that big play. It's a hold on Hollingshed. I think when they watch that one on film, they're going to tell him he did a pretty good job. Southern's wide receivers blocked very well. Jerry Kill doesn't like that Well, call you at can all. see Hollingshed jumping up and down, Mike. I think he did all you can ask of him. I think, I think it was an excellent block. Chuck Feeney's crew, though, is marking it off, and it moves it back to the 34-yard line. Well, that hurts. Illegal block in the back. During the run, 10 yards from the spot of foul, first down. Illinois State is losing 15-10. to 10. If ISU loses and if Southern wins, Southern is in the driver's seat in the Gateway Conference after two games. The ball's at the 34-yard line. And we'll take a 2-0 record into a three-game road trip. Hollingshed to the right side, Abbott. I'm sorry, Abbott to the right side. Hollingshed to the left side. And now whistles blow. Does Samberski take time, or is Southern or Northern Iowa took time? Wow. Wow. Only one left. Timeout. Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa takes its second timeout of the first half, of the uh, second half. We'll keep it here. It's time for the Furniture King scoring summary, brought to you by the Furniture King, just east of the University Mall, Carbondale, Southern Illinois' largest furniture store. Brandon Robinson, a 67-yard run with a fake punt at the 836 mark of the first quarter. Muhammad Abdul Kadir to Courtney Abbott, a 15-yard score. Four minutes later, then two and a half minutes later, Muhammad ripped a 24-yard score. Everhart converted on all three of those touchdowns, 21-0 Southern after one. It became 21-6 when Petrie threw to Sanderson a seven-yard score. The extra point was no good at the 848 mark of the second quarter. That was the score at the halftime, 21-6. Then in the third quarter, Abdul Qadir raced 57 yards for a score, 16 seconds, 26 seconds into the third quarter. Extra point good by Everhart, both that one from 35 yards out. And Southern leads it 28-6. The scoring summary brought to you by the Furniture King just east of the University Mall, Carbondale, Southern Illinois' largest furniture store. Dogs with their first cellular first down at the 34-yard line. Wide to the right side, it's Abbott. A slot right is McAllister, upright at right end. And on the left side, it's Hollingshed, and it's a handoff to Muhammad. Tries to cut back and does. He runs to the 30-yard line with a penalty marker down. That's the only negative on Southern in these last two weeks. They had 14 penalties last week, and coming up is their ninth penalty of this game. And that's going to be a hold on the salute. Oh, a face mask. I'm sorry. Face mask on Northern Iowa. I'm sorry. They threw it right in the middle of the pile which nine times out of ten is a hole. This was the f- one time. Here's Phoenix. Personal foul, f- face mask on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. That's a big one. You don't see a 15-yard on a face mask too often nope. anymore. That means that they just ripped his face mask after he was down. 15 yards at the end of the run. Dogs move into the scoring zone again. They're in the red zone at the 16-yard line. They are 16 yards away from a 29-point lead over Northern Iowa. Wow. Three receivers left. There's the snap. Drop play to Muhammad on shotgun. Runs right. He's to the 10. Got a block to the 5. Down to the 4-yard line. It's another first cellular first down for the Dogs. And Muhammad is headed for another 150-yard game, maybe a 200-yard game. And he's had a hand in all all but one of Southern's touchdowns so far. He's found a pretty good seam on the right side so far here in the second half. They've made a couple of adjustments and certainly moved the ball a lot better so far here in the second half. It is first and goal for the Salukis. They say his knee went down at the five-yard line. Matt Linegrover, the Saluki offensive coordinator up there in the booth to our right. Pat Poor is quarterback's coach. They send in the next play. Shuffling personnel. 26 carries, 172 yards. How about Brandon Robinson? Three carries, 121. Two tights, running backs in that eye bone. Three running backs behind Sam Bursky. Option near side run. Joel keeping, tucks it. He's headed for the goal line. He stops shy at the one. And it's second down and goal. Ten and a half to play in the third quarter. And SIU is dominating Northern Iowa, much like it did four years ago in a 34-14 win here. Southern is 
20 minutes of playing time from beating this team in Carbondale for the third straight time and 20 minutes of playing time from sole possession of first place in the league after two league games. Two tight, second and goal from the two. Handoff, tailback, Muhammad to the one, driving to the goal line. He got in for a touchdown. King Muhammad with another touchdown. He breaks the school record for rushing touchdowns in a season. That is his 17th. It is his third of this game, and the Salukis are rolling now 34-6 over Northern Iowa. What's going on at the mat? He popped in the middle and then took it straight to his right, came out of the pile basically untouched, and Southern is having a little bit of fun here. I've never seen Northern Iowa play like this. Good snap and spot. The kick is up, and it is good by Scott Everhart. He's perfect on point afters. And how many times have we seen Southern play like this? Dogs dominating Northern Iowa, 35-6. to six. Back to McAndrews Stadium in just a minute. 710 Bookstore is ready for a great season of Saluki football. This year, join 710 for all the excitement as the Salukis play under the lights. Whether it's under the lights or under the sun, 710 is what you need. Officially licensed sweatshirts, jackets, T-shirts, jewelry, golf accessories, hats, and more. Suit up for a new season at 710 Bookstore. At the game, on the strip, or the World Wide Web at 710.com. Spell it out. 710 Bookstore, the place for everything Saluki. 710 on the strip, Carbondale. According to Yahoo.com, there are currently 23,214 websites devoted to sports, and you can surf from archery to wrestling for just 20 bucks a month with Shawnee Link. With no long-term agreements, no sign-up fees, you get unlimited access to bowling, boxing, and boomeranging. Unless, of course, sports aren't your cup of tea, in which case you could peruse 3,816 websites devoted to the wonderful world of tea for just 20 bucks a month with Shawnee Link. Savor green tea, black tea, herbal tea, fruit tea, and oolong tea. I should say at this point that this has nothing to do with sports and nothing to do with tea. It does, however, have everything to do with you and the choices you'll have with local service, local commitment, and 24-7 local tech support. Call 1-800-461-3956 or click on www.shawneelink.net today. Here's Everhart's kickoff following the touchdown. It is end over end, and it's Sanderson again from the 11. Near hash to the 20. He's to the 25. Popped and brought down by Jay up the Grove. How about special teams so far in this ballgame? Southern is it is dominating all facets of this game. It's an interesting ball game because Southern tried a couple of trick plays early, Mike, mm-hmm. to get on the scoreboard, but once they got on a roll, they have just yeah. smashed him in the mouth and gone about their business. Austin Chu is one of the McDonald's Magic 95.1 honorary captains. He just hustled onto the field to retrieve Scott Everhart's tee. Scott picks it back from him. Thanks, Austin. And The, the biggest difference in this ball game, obviously, the defense. Two receivers to the left. Now one comes in motion and it's a handoff to Benz. It runs off the right end of the uh, 30 and he is brought down after a four-yard gain in Northern Iowa down by 29 points with 9.40 to go in the third quarter. Its first down play is a run off right end. And Petrie has struggled to throw the ball 7 of 13. Southern struggled to stop the pass this season but with the exception of that long pass in the second quarter, the Salukis have shut the passing game down here today. I mean, Southern's just been in command from the get-go. Three receivers to the left side, one receiver to the right side. Second down coming up. Five yards to go. There's the snap. Southern's blitzing. Petrie with a pump fake has pressure. He's pass faster as he throws. Throws high. Gets it. Picked it off at the 40-yard line. Dogs get it back. And the Salukis have a chance to put this game away. And Petrie is slow to get up. I mean, he was smack hard as he unleashed that pass. And Southern with its second interception of this game and its 12th interception of the year. And Chris Gadsden, who's had some harrowing moments one-on-one coverage, has a little bone thrown to him as he went up high to make a tremendous interception. Petrie was just drilled right as he threw the football. And SIU's been in his face all night long. Seven for 14 now for Petrie, and he's going to remember that one because he still has stars in his eyes as he goes back to the sidelines. Southern has a chance to put this game away. Hollingshed to the left side, Montez to the right side. 9.09 to play in the third quarter. Running backs are an eye. There's the snap. It's a handoff to Robinson. He's hit by two men and dropped down for a loss of a yard. It's second down. Clock runs. And even though Southern's done a tremendous job in this ball game throwing the ball, now they're in a situation they'd love to keep it on the ground. And there's an injured Northern Iowa player. Southern Illinois University, 35-6 over UNI. And while we 
While the uh, Panthers attend to their injured player at the 45-yard line, let's check scores. Brought to you by First Bank and Trust Company. Banking with local advantage, First Bank and Trust of Murfreesboro has roots in Murfreesboro. Here's Russ Eisenstein in the booth with scores. We'll stay in the top 25 this time. Okay. California, all right, if that's okay with you. The 24th-ranked USC Trojans, they lead California 30-21 to with about four minutes to go in that ball game. Iowa State opening it up in Ames over Texas Tech 31 to 10. Seneca Wallace a couple of touchdowns in that ball game. LSU 20, Florida 7. That one in the swamp. How do you do, uh, Mr. Ron Zook, the new head coach at Florida, as LSU is rolling all over him. Bottom of the seventh inning. Anaheim 1, Minnesota nothing. That's the ALCS. That's game four. They have every every ball game in that series has been outstanding, and it proves to be a thriller tonight as the Angels lead one to nothing in the bottom of the seventh inning. Back to you, Mike. Banking with local advantage, First Bank and Trust Company of Murfreesboro has roots in Murfreesboro. After the ball game, we'll pick the Ian Baker Chevrolet Cadillac O2 guy of the game. 2002 model year closeout going on right now at Ian Baker. Second down, 12 yards to go. Wide outs to either side, running back turning on. SIU sees a four-man front and a blitz, and Samberski falls down and loses a yard. The well, Salukis haven't scored yet off the first two turnovers. The third one here is pending. It's third down and 13 with 8.25 to play, and Southern's going in reverse after the Gadsden INT. He backed away before he had the football. Southern maintains possession. Southern still has Bryce Schaefer at right uh, tackle. At right guard, it's Matt Miller. Matt Fritz, or, uh, Mike Fritzer is still at center. Brian Akins is at left uh, tackle. Zach Schumacher. And his arm banged up in the uh, first quarter. He's still in there, though. And he's in there at left. Let's check it here. Matt Anderson's in there at left guard. It's third down and 13. There's the snap and shotgun and whistles. Let's see if Northern Iowa was offside. Ryan Arnold, the defensive end, came across. Procedure is the call on SIU. And the Salukis with ten penalties in this, nine penalties in this game. Dead ball. Full start. On the offense, five yards, still third down. Who do you like for the Baker go-to guys so far? You like uh, Muhammad? You like Brandon Robinson? You like Egan? You like Whitaker? Who do you like? It's almost a team pick here tonight. This is... Oh, you team player, you. It's not often when you see all facets of the ball nope. being handled the way they are tonight from special teams to both sides of the football. Southern needs the Northern Iowa 48 for a first down, and it's a drop play to Muhammad. He's got blockers. He runs to the 40 and head to the 43-yard line. That's the original line of scrimmage, and it's fourth down, and Everhart will punt. I like that play for a couple reasons. It keeps the clock moving, and it also picks up enough yardage where if Everhart gets away a good punt, Southern should pin Northern Iowa into some decent situation, maybe inside their own 20 here, and Everhart's done a good job except for one time he had a 22-yarder came off the side of his foot, but he also has a 61-yarder here on the night. Three punts, averaging just over 40 yards per punt tonight, and he's punting to Sanderson, who's standing at the 20-yard line. Southern's run a fake punt for a touchdown in this game. Mike Fritzler to snap it. Everybody ready on fourth down and nine yards to go. Long count here. B-Rob sets him. Brandon Robinson, there's the snap. Plenty of time for Everhart. He gets it out of there, and he booms it beautifully. Sanderson all the way back. He lets it well hit at the six. It's headed for the end zone. Hop right. A great hop and out of bounds at the five-yard line. Great kick by Scott Everhart of some 57 yards, and they kill it just inside the five-yard line, and Northern Iowa takes over in horrible field position. Special teams, special teams. A 53-yard punt by Everhart. They're going to take this possession over at the four-yard line. Western Illinois beating Illinois State 15-10 with three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. ISU is also 1-0. If that holds up, and if Southern holds up with this win, the Salukis will be 2-0 going to ISU alone in first place next week. Will be 2-0 for the first time in league play since 91. Now they're directly under center. It is Petrie, and it's a handoff. It is Ben. Steps over one man, runs to the seven-yard line, and is shoved back. Gain of a couple. Second down and long. SIU led 21 to nothing after one, 21 to six after two. It is 35 to six with 21 minutes of playing time to go in this game. And for longtime Saluki fans, that clock won't move nearly quick enough. Southern's in complete command of this game. 
Two receivers to the right side. One receiver to the left side. Petrie's gone the distance in his first start of the season. He was 6-2 and two as a starter a year ago. Low snap, hauls it down, retreats to the end zone, sets up, throws it long to the far sideline, in and out of Mace's hands, and then completed the 26-yard line, almost picked off. Gadsden came within an inch of his second interception. Almost tipped straight to Gadsden. Third down, seven yards to go. They get a first down if they make it to the 15 with 5.56 in the third. Tough area of the field. Petrie has struggled anyway passing the ball. Now when he drops back, he's basically passing from the goal line and not getting a lot on those passes. Ought to see a rush here. Wide receivers to the right side and to the left side. Petrie's in shotgun at the two. Ball to be snapped at the seven. Southern showing blitz up the middle. And there they come. And back to throw is Petrie. He has time. Steps up. He throws. It's caught at the 11-yard line. Shy of the first down. Justin George made the tackle on the tight end. And it was a convincing tackle, a sure-handed tackle on Ryan Walter, the tight end. It's fourth down, and they'll punt from their own end zone. And Southern can seal it here if it could get a block punt here for points. George, playing with a bad hamstring, was in there in the secondary and made a good tackle on Walter. Now he's going to drop back to get this punt. Southern should get the football around midfield. Frost to punt it from his own end zone. He averaged 52 per punt last week. He is averaging 40 per punt this week. There is the snap. The rush is, ah, they blocked it. It's in the end zone. It's in the back line. There's a scramble. It rolls out of the end zone. They throw it back into the end zone. It's a safety, and Southern leads it 37 to 6. Andre Rockwell with the block. Rockwell blocked it. Wofford threw it back into play. Now, one of the officials is talking to Feeney. There's a penalty marker down at the 10-yard line. And a Northern Iowa def- offensive lineman's shaken up. And the play may come back. Southern went after him, got a piece of it, but may have committed a penalty. There's an injured Northern Iowa player. It's Nick Matson. Southern's dominant special teams play continues, but the play may not hold up. We got a personal foul. Illegal contact on the center by the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. The Salukis with their 10th penalty, and it takes the safety off the board. And it gives Northern Iowa a first down. And that's the only negative on the Saluki ball club in the last two weeks. And Jerry Kill gets an explanation from the field judge. Apparently somebody touched the center. And Kill is irate. I mean, he's just screaming at Feeney. He's just screaming at Feeney. And now he's... And he's screaming across the field now. I don't know if it's another official or what. I mean, Coach Kill is storming up and down the Saluki sideline in a rage. And Northern Iowa gets a first down. 5-10 to play in the third quarter. And they keep it with Petrie off right end, and he runs to the 30-yard line. And what in the world was that play? Ben, she faked the handoff to him, and they swept right. Must have been a busted play. Benj looked back as if to say, why didn't you give me the ball? They gained about three, and it's second down and seven. Jerry Kill, is he was back working on Sunday and practiced with the ball club Sunday night. Remember, he suffered a seizure, never lost consciousness after the ball game last Saturday, but did not miss a day this week. There's the snap, play action, Petrie to throw, rolling right, Sheffler has him, Rockwell has him, that's a sack back on the 21-yard line, and Southern's defensive line is overpowering Northern Iowa here tonight. They're showing some superior speed, Mike. They're really a lot quicker. Sometimes you and I have been able to do the job as far as just brute strength, but Southern much quicker on defense. Southern's just dominating here tonight. I mean just dominating here tonight. You know, usually when Southern wins the ball game, it's hectic. It goes to the last minute, and there's 612 points scored. But tonight, Southern's just dominated from the opening whistle. Third down, 15. Can Southern shut it down here? Four minutes to go, third quarter. Rush is on. From shotgun, Petrie has time. He throws it long up the middle of the field. There's contact. It's incomplete, and it's fourth down. Gatson and Mays collided. They went after Gatson. Chris was right with them and broke the play up. It's fourth down, and Frost will punt again. It's one of the better efforts we've seen from Gatson. Stride for stride, got his arm in there, knocked the ball away at the last minute, and we'll go through all this again. Southern is so much more physical in these last three weeks. On the heels, really, of the West Virginia Tech game. Southern won that by a million points, but 
was not happy with its physical play. It is fourth down. Rush is on. He gets the kick out of there. Fine kick by Frost. George all the way back. Far sideline. Threw his hands at the 20. Rolls to the 15. And he let it go. Apparently he didn't touch it. And the ball's at the 8-yard line. And that's where Southern will go first and 10. Apparently it just literally went through his hands. He never touched it. And the ball was killed by Northern Iowa at the 8-yard line. And that was a sensational punt by Derek Frost. He kind of drifted on it, Mike, when the ball first went off. And from our angle, you could tell the ball was going to be over his head. A 70-yard punt. Have we seen some punts these last two weeks? Cypress for Western Illinois. Boom going 73 yards last week. And now Frost airs one out this week. And Everhart, meantime, he's playing the best football of his four-year career. Certainly his best football since his freshman season. Wide to the left side, the Saluki kicker. Wide to the left side, Montez. Everyone else is in tight. Running backs are in an eye. And Joel gives it off to Muhammad, who hands off the right guard, piles to the 12-yard line. Mr. Muhammad headed for another 200-yard rushing game after a 73-yard first half. He and anybody you want to pick on the Saluki defense, plus Brandon Robinson on offense, the leading candidates for the E.N. Baker Chevrolet Cadillac go-to guy of the game award. 178 yards now for Abdul Qadir. He's averaging 202 per game, 251 the previous four games. And tonight, he set the single-season scoring and single-season rushing touchdown records at SIU. And he's really only played five games. Tight end on the left side. There's the snap. Joel gives it off to uh, Muhammad. Penalty marker down. Busted. 25-30. 35. Out to the 40-yard line goes Muhammad, but the play might come back. The umpire threw a ju- threw a uh, flag right to the middle of the play. We have an injured Northern Iowa player, Kevin Stensrud. His father played in the NFL. Is hurt. He hits the deck, now gets up and heads toward the huddle. But Muhammad's run that would have put him over 200 yards is coming off the board. 244 to play in the third quarter. The scoring summary brought to you by the Furniture King just east of the University Mall, Carbondale, Southern Illinois' largest furniture store. The Salukis led 21-0 after one, 21-6 at the half, 35-6 now. Bowling on the offense, half the distance from the previous spot, repeat second down. Robinson, a 67-yard run with a fake punt for a touchdown. Abdul Qadir threw a TD pass to Abbott. Abdul Qadir has rushed two touchdowns in this game, three touchdowns in this game, 24, 57, and two yards out. Northern Iowa's only score, Petrie to Sanderson, a seven-yard score. The summary brought to you by the Furniture King, just east of the Mall Carbondale, Southern Illinois' largest furniture store. SIU 35, Northern Iowa 6. Mike Reese, Gene Green, Russ Eisenstein at the MAC. To the left side, it is it is Hollingshed. To the right side, it is Montez. Op, and they give the ball off, and it is the fullback, Robinson, and he only gained about four yards. Curtis Jones is in the game, giving Abdul Qadir a breather for the first time. And it's third down, eight yards to go, with 2.09, clock rolling in the third period. He's back in there now. The penalty before wiped off a 27-yard gain by Abdul Qadir, who's, again, at 178 unofficially in this ball game on 29 carries. They need the 18-yard line for a first down. Southern could use another first cellular first down. Now going to put Bilal Rashid in there for Hollingshed. SIU is 16 and a half minutes of playing time away from its first 2-0 league record since 91. Now, Southern's too late getting this going. Calls timeout. Timeout dogs, 135 to play in the third quarter. 35-6 in favor of Southern. Budweiser True Music is music created for real music lovers by real musicians.
Third and six for SIU. There's the snap. Samberski pulls back. He's looking to throw. He has time. He throws it long for McAllister. Bump. Where's the flag? There it is. Pass interference. Pass interference will give the Dogs a first down with 129 left. Jarvis Phillips, a strong safety, knocked him down, Mike. I'm not sure he could have caught the football, but it was close enough, and that's going to give Southern the first down and keep this drive alive. So the Dogs had McAllister, the tight end, flying up the near hash, and he was interfered with. It prevented him from catching it, and the Dogs have a first down. Pass interference on the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Jerry, Jerry Kill was not ready to be told for about the third week in a row that the pass was uncatchable. Western Illinois 22, Illinois State 17, 118 to play. That get ball games at Macomb. If that holds up, if this holds up, SIU 35, Northern Iowa 6, Southern will be alone in first place after two games in the Gateway Conference. Wide receivers to either side. McAllister spread two yards at left end. Running backs are denied. Handoff it goes to Muhammad. He's smacked at the line. Can't break that tackle. No gain in the play. It's about the first time they've really... Uh, and some shoving late in the play. They shove Muhammad around a little bit. And the fans get a little bit antsy. Samberski wants a flag. Second down and ten. Starting to see a little frustration uh-huh. on the other side of the football here with Northern Iowa. Samberski pleads his case with the line judge. About apparently about Northern Iowa's play on that play. Robinson into the ball game, Bucky out of the ball game. Under one minute to play in the third quarter. The Salukis lead by 29 points, dominating the 12th ranked team in the country. On the verge of beating top 12 teams two straight weeks. Three receivers to the right side, one receiver to the left side. Dogs could sure use a first cellular first down here. With 42 seconds to play in the third quarter, there's the snap. Draw play to Muhammad off left guard, runs to the 30 yard line. Gained about three, brought down at the left hash. 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. Clock rolling. Third down, seven yards to go. And that might be the final play of the third quarter. We'll see. The Salukis do not have to run another play in the third quarter, and Killing Company may let the clock run out and then have the uh, break between quarters to pick a play that will work on third down and seven. And the Salukis are going to let it run out, and the Salukis are going to have a 29-point lead going into the fourth quarter. They are 15 minutes away from their first 2-0 league start since 1991. 35-6 dogs as we go to the fourth at the MAC. Back with the fourth quarter in just a minute. Hey, Saluki fans. Go crazy! You've got Saluki pride? Show it. Flaunt it. Tell the world you love the dogs at Saluki Central. On the Strip in Carbondale. T-shirts, sweatshirts, polos, button-downs, custom gifts, glassware. Everything you need to show your Greek and Saluki pride. It's the largest and most eclectic selection of Saluki stuff in southern Illinois. So before you go to the game, grab some new Saluki gear from Saluki Central. On the Strip in Carbondale. If you love the Salukis, go crazy! At Saluki. Lukey Central. Kroger Fresh Deli Fried Chicken. Take home convenience with, with homemade taste. Kroger Fresh Deli Fried Chicken. Tastes like Grandma used to make. The Kroger Deli has wishbone fried chicken that tastes better than ever. We hand bread it with a special blend of herbs and spices, and it's always fresh. So it's juicier, more tender, and moist, like Grandma's. Kroger Fresh Deli Fried Chicken. Convenience with homemade taste. SIU's up by 29 points. At the start of the fourth quarter at home, leading Northern Iowa 35 to 6. Three receivers to the right side. Tight end on the left side. Samberski in shotgun. There's the snap. Looking right to throw. Throwing right. Caught by Abbott at the 45. Has a first down at the 47-yard line. It's a first cellular first down as Samberski throws to Abbott. And Joel is now 11 for 17 through the air. Well, that was a nice pass. Not a lot of room in that seam at all, but he found his man. Another first down for SIU. That's 20 first downs now on the night for Southern Northern Iowa. Only seven. Another contribution to the Saluki Athletic Scholarship Fund by First Cellular. A dominant performance by SIU. They are the first place dogs right now with 14.42 to play in the fourth quarter. Okay. Western Illinois beating Illinois State. First place in playing like it right now. My goodness. Wide out to the left side, it's Abbott. Samberski touches the left side of his helmet, turns and takes the snap and gives it off to Muhammad. Breaks one tackle, but not a second to get to the line of scrimmage. They've, they've done a better job on him than anybody else has done on him. He's still close to 200 yards in this game. It's second down. 
Eight yards to go. What do you tell your kids? Good job. He didn't get 300 yards tonight. <laughs> Muhammad said it after the Eastern Michigan game. Actually, he said it after the Western Illinois game. That the Western game didn't get Southern over the hump that the Eastern Michigan game did to play as strong as they did up there against that 1A club. Second down, eight yards to go. SIU leads it 35-6. to six. Running backs are in an eye, and it's a five-man front for you and I. There's the snap, and Joel gives it off to Muhammad. He's trying to get off right end to the 50, the 49, and is shoved back. And it brings up third down and six yards to go. Now flags thrown late. And we have some extra curricular well, stuff on UNI and Northern Iowa. It's continuing to be late hits after yep. the tackle would be my guess. Here's Feeney, the referee. Yeah. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the play. First down. That's a handy little call, Mike, on second and nine. Would be third and nine if that... Was not called. 15-yard penalty tacked on here. Southern moves down the field, and you can just see a lot of frustration yeah. on the defensive side of the ball. Right and now. now here's one another flag thrown. Another flag. Well, well, I'm sorry. Feeney just dropped it. Feeney just dropped it. It's at the 34-yard line. I thought maybe some complaints from the Northern Iowa sideline. If Southern scores here, it'll get Muhammad out of the ball game. I'm sure. Because if it's if Northern Iowa's frustration is going to continue, Southern could ill afford any injuries. It has enough injuries right now. Running backs are in and on, but is up by 29 at home against UNI. Four-man front for the Panthers. And they don't blitz, and Southern runs the fullback. Robinson trying to get off left, and he's ankle tackle. A gain of about a yard. Nice open field tackle by Jimmy Brown with strong safety. But the clock continues to run. Northern Iowa only has one more timeout. So does Southern, but Southern has a 29-point lead. Southern said... Uh, Defense in this ball game has been very, very good, allowing only six points. Southern in a rare situation of caring less whether they have a timeout left or not. Eric Egan leading the way so far with eight tackles, five of them solo. Alexis Moreland with five, three of them solo, and Andre Rockwell with four tackles. Rockwell also has a pick. Gadsden has a pick. Southern has a fumble recovery, too. Whiteouts to either side. McAllister spread three yards at right end. It's second down, eight yards to go. Running back, sort of eye. There's the snap. Handoff goes to Muhammad. He runs to the 30-yard line to the 29. A gain of about three. And it leads to third down. And SIU is five yards from a first down. From here, it is a 46-yard field goal for Everhart. Dogs lead it 35-6. to six. And Southern's dominance here. Might be part of the reason why we haven't had more of a raucous crowd here. There have been the attendance tonight, 10,216 is the announced attendance here tonight. And it's been relatively quiet. That crowd last week for the Western game, as loud as we've heard it in a long, long time. Two receivers right and make it three now. It is third down. It is four yards to go. There's the snap. Samburski in shotgun, and they blitz. He jogs right, gets a block. He's throwing long. It's for Montez. Caught it at the two. Penalty marker down. And the pass is ruled. A completion, I think, to Montez. And there's a flag. They interfered with him, apparently. Let's make sure it's not offensive interference. The ball's at the one-yard line. Montez catches his second pass. Let's see if it holds up. And more flags thrown. Well, Kill's really excited to think when he gets Montez all the way back healthy and into this offense. He's been waiting for this. And wishes he had Allen to go along with him. But Allen's out for the season with a broken hand. He needed surgery on Monday. Pay is going to hold up. Pass interference on the defense. Decline. First down on a one. 28, 28 Northern yard, Mike. Excuse me, Gene. Northern Iowa split its last four games and... All heck's broken loose up there, like what's wrong with the Panthers, who's won the league ten times. And there'll be even more of that right now. It's first and goal from the game-clinching touchdown. And on that pass play, what a great job by Brandon Robinson to stay back and block for Sam Burski to get that pass off. Southern's Robinson at fullback, and its wide receivers block so well. McAllister tight right, Rashid is tight left. Muhammad's rushed for three TDs and passed for a fourth. It's Muhammad. Hits off right tackle and scores another touchdown. And SIU is on its way to a 4-3 and three record and a 2-0 and oh league record. The Salukis may have just scored the clinching points. A one-yard touchdown run by Abdul Qadir. And Muhammad 
with the school record for rushing touchdowns in the season. He gets his third rushing touchdown in this game and a fourth rushing touchdown in this game and the fifth touchdown he's been part of. 35 touches, 198 yards rushing. Two yards shy of 200. Everhart, uh uh-oh, high snap. They get it down. The kick is up. He got it anyway. 42-6. to And can you say first place in the Gateway Conference? Dogs, 42. Northern Iowa, 6. Back to the Mac in a minute. Whether it's wiring up a ceiling fan or lighting up an entire house, Wright Dewitt Center is your first stop for everything electrical. Lighting fixtures, ceiling fans, extension cords, wire, outdoor lights, light bulbs, and more. And if you have any questions, ask one of our experienced home professionals. They'll help you with your project from beginning to end. Wright Dewitt Center in Murfreesboro and Sparta. When you build with Wright Dewitt Center. With all that we have, you've got it made. Good food and a good mood. Mosey Mugwise. You never tasted anything quite like lip smacking food, Mosey style. It will fill your heart's desire. So drop by Mosey Mugwise. A good food and a good mood. Mosey Mugwise. Mark Farley, the Northern Iowa coach, said it before this game. Southern's the top team in the league now. End over end. Sanderson's eight yards deep in coming out with it. They'll start at the 20-yard line, and the Salukis haven't done anything here tonight to make Farley a liar. I don't know how much he may have believed that, but he said it, and Southern's proving tonight. Right now, it's playing the best football in the league. Yeah, sometimes those comments are coach speak, but... Tonight is coming true, and Mike, I think the biggest thing about this ball game, Southern, of course, had a huge emotional win last week, but it's often what you do with it. If it's just a bump in the road, do you do anything with that momentum? And, boy, has Southern come out on all sides tonight, did a lot with it. Two receivers left, two right. Petrie's gone the distance, and they hand the ball off, and they run to the 22-yard line. You know, if you follow that ball game up tonight by just laying an egg, you go, well, that may, may have been an illusion, but... Southern playing the top two teams in the league and playing them so well, but they've really turned it up a notch here tonight. This is just amazing. They are 2-0, and headed for 2-0, and are leading by 36 points, and they've played the two highest-ranked teams in the league nationally. This team was number two preseason in 1AA, Northern Iowa. Two receivers right, one left, and Southern is throttling it. And here's Petrie pulling it down. He's going to run, and he runs to the 27-yard line. And let, about four, and it's third down. Boy, I saw you'll let him run all day, 10-24 yep. to left. They ran on first down, down by 36. He pulls it down and runs on second down himself, and now it's third down and long. The McDonald's Magic 95.1 honorary captains, Christian German of Carbondale, Austin Chua of DeSoto. They registered at participating McDonald's in our area. They have uh, been on the field retrieving the key, kicking tees. The Magic 95.1 McDonald's Honorary Captain's Contest open to all kids 8 to 12 years old. Registered participating McDonald's. Third and three. They run a draw play and run to the 30-yard line and look like they get a first down. Down by 36. They're apparently just... They give all indications. They just want to get on the plane back to Waterloo. They're running it now. They've gone the distance with Petrie. They didn't even change and go to Jurgens, who'd been their starters as they started the year 3-2. and two. They went to Petrie, who was 6-2 and two as a starter last year before he got hurt. And they've only produced six points. They lost at home last week, scoring only 12, 31-12. to 12. Two receivers left, two receivers right. Petrie shifts into shotgun, Southern blitzes. He throws to the far sideline, low. Uh, maybe that's why they're running. <laughs> Second down, 10 yards to go with 9.23 to play in the fourth quarter. After the game, Russell will have the scores. Gene and he will have all the stats. Jerry Kill will join us in the Saluki locker room. His club is just throttling the preseason favorite, the kingpin of this league. The league's been around 17 years. Northern Iowa's won 10 of the 17 titles. But this is year 18, and right now it's the year of the dogs. Blitz is on. He's in heavy seats at the screen. Dump it off the right side, 35 to the 40. Up the far sideline, Southern's chasing. 45 of Southern, 40. And out of bounds inside the 40-yard line on the pass to Jason Breland. 
And all of a sudden, Northern Iowa's in Saluki territory with 9.13 to play in the ballgame. It's 42-6 in favor of SIU. The Dogs trying for 4-3, and 2-0 and in the Gateway Conference. This league's been around 17 years. SIU's only won two or more games in the 17 Gateway seasons eight times. Half the season, Southern doesn't even win two games. And it hasn't been 2-0 since 1991. Two receivers right, one to the left side. There's the snap in shotgun, and they run Breland, and Southern's right there. No game. Second down, 10, with 8.50 to play in the contest. Southern is up 42-6. On the near sideline, backup quarterback Stanley Bryant, Bryant is warming up. There are an awful lot of negative streaks in Saluki football history, Gene. The positive ones thus stand out like a sore thumb, and this will be the third year in a row that Southern will beat Northern Iowa in Carbondale. Three straight years. Two right, one left. In shotgun, it is Petrie. It is second down and 11. There is the snap. Looking for a quick post. He throws incomplete. Boy, he missed Sanders and badly. For the most part, he just really hasn't had much touch on his passes. Perhaps they're staying with him because they're going to stay with him the rest of the season and let him work through all of his problems. But they haven't changed at all, though their passing has been feeble, and this is the number seven passing team in passing efficiency in the league. It's a seven-team league. He's nine for 20. He's been picked off twice, 162 yards, but 69 of those yards came on one pass, and 34 came on another. Third down and 11. Egan is blitzing. Back to throw. He has time. He throws. It's caught by Sanderson. Far boundary for a first down. First down at the 25-yard line. Sanderson with a good catch, and that's one of Petrie's best throws. Davidson was over there on the coverage, and they get a first down with a 14-yard gain, stopping the clock with 8-11 to play in the contest. So Mark Farley hired to rebuild the Panther tradition. They'd slipped two years ago. They'd been around 500, 7-4. They expect better, and they certainly expect better than 3-3, three and three, and that's where they're headed now. Southern is headed for 4-3. and three. Quick count, quarterback draw. Petrie's looking for a hole. He's going to find one, and Southern brought him down. Southern is, uh uh-oh, he's trying to break free. He's still going. Petrie's still going, and he picked up 10 yards. Southern quit on the play, and Petrie didn't, and he ran for 10 yards and got a first down, and Clay is the defensive coordinator. is going to put in four new defensive linemen after that play. Boy, it appeared he was down, Mike, and just great second effort to his, pick up the first down. His knee went down at the 18-yard line, and it's second down and two. Seven and a half to play in the game. All Southern tonight. It's 42-6, to six, dogs. Second down from the Saluki 18-yard line. In motion from right to left goes the tight end, Walter. They run the ball with Breland. Cuts back at the 15, has a first down at the 10-yard line. And it's a first and goal for Northern Iowa. That stops the clock as they pick up a first down with 7.22 remaining in the game. So you and I trying to make it respectable. Southern in command of this game and seven and a half from sole possession and command of the Gateway Conference. Sole possession of first place and command of the Gateway Conference. There's the snap. Handoff goes to a Breland, breaks one tackle, runs to the line of scrimmage, maybe the nine-yard line. Eric Egan again with another tackle. He's one of the top candidates for the Ian Baker Chevrolet Cadillac go-to guy of the game. Rob Cash and company make a contribution to the Saluki Athletic Scholarship Fund as part of the go-to guy of the game program. Under seven minutes to play in the game. 6.45 to play, exactly. Ball is just outside the nine-yard line. Sanderson goes wide to the left side. Mays, their leading receiver, has been held in check today. He goes wide to the right side. Running backs are in an eye there at the far hash. Southern's going to blitz off the edges. Back to throw. It's Petrie. It's a fade in the end zone for Mays. And he looks like he caught it. He caught it out of bounds. Incomplete. Kind of juggling it as he went out of bounds as well. But they take a shot right at the back corner of the end zone. Gadsden was on him like a glove. Petrie threw that ball beautifully. Now it is third down with 6 minutes 25 seconds to play in the game. Southern trying to shut it down. Can it get and hold Northern Iowa to just one touchdown tonight? Southern headed for a three-week road trip, number one in the Gateway Conference. Wideouts to either side, running backs are in and on. 
It's third down from the 10-yard line. There is the snap. Here's Petrie to throw. He has a rush. He throws in the end zone. Low. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Sanderson caught it for the TD from nine yards away. A beautifully thrown ball by Petrie. That's his second touchdown pass of this game. Both have gone to Ben Sanderson. So Petrie to Sanderson from nine yards out with 6.20 to play in the third in the uh, ball game. And now Northern Iowa's homebreaker is on for the extra point. That was a 13, 80-yard drive, Mike, but it used up four minutes and 45 seconds, so the clock very much the enemy right now for Northern Iowa. On the point after now, it's homebreaker. Good snap and spot. The kick is up, and he hit it. Let's pause for a minute. It's 42-13. to 13. The Salukis lead Northern Iowa. Hi, this is Richard Davis, your Century 21 care guy. You know, there's no I in team. Just like the Salukis working together as a team, my wife Janie and I will work for you as a team in buying or selling your home. That's why we're known as your Century 21 total care package. The Salukis keep on going strong, and so will Janie and I, because we care about you. Call Richard or Janie Davis today at 985-CARE. That's 985-2273. We'll make it a team effort to take care of you. McDonald's loves to see you smile. And if you're between 8 and 12 years old, McDonald's would love to see you be the honorary captain at the next SIU home game. Sign up today at participating McDonald's. Two boys and two girls will be chosen for each game to help with the coin toss and retrieve the tea after kickoffs. You'll be announced to the crowd at the game by Mike Reese on Magic 95.1. The 2002 McDonald's honorary captains. Sign up at participating McDonald's today. Illinois State's lost. Southern is 6-20 from winning and taking over officially atop the GFC. Southern's waiting for an onside kick with 6-20 to play. Homebrecker is in there to oblige. Frost normally kicks off, but this is an onside situation. Nope, he punched it. It's end over end. Gatson lets it go, and that's fine. Southern will start at the 20-yard line. And the dogs will go first and 10. Let's see what kind of changes Coach Kill and company make offensively. As Southern Illinois is in command, 42 to 13. Is he going to go to Stanley Bryant at quarterback? Nope, he's going to stay with uh, Samberski. Samberski is going to come in with 6-16 to play in the game. They haven't turned it over the last two weeks, and he doesn't want to start now. Let's see. If King Muhammad's still in the game. Yep, he's still in the ball game too. Be careful here, boys. 6-16 left. Abbott wide to the left side. Everyone else is in tight. Four-man front for Northern Iowa. Give the ball off to Muhammad. Trying to get off left end. Uh-oh, he fumbled the football. They say the ground caused the fumble. He's down at the 25-yard line. It's a gain of about five. That should put him over 200, shouldn't it, Gene? He's 198 going into that possession. Going to give him four yards, so he's officially now. 202. 2.02 on 36 carries. He is at 12.14 for the season. He is at 12.14 for the season, unofficially. Second down and five with 5.45 to play. Sam Bursky ready to take the snap. It is second down coming up. And they give it off to uh, Muhammad again, and he's pummeled at the 26. He gained about a yard. Don't get anybody hurt here, boys. Five and a half left. It's too precarious here for, in Kill's mind apparently, to sub and risk turnovers and all heck breaking loose at the end of the game. He wants this thing to be solid from start to finish. Southern trying to go their third straight ball game, Mike, without a turnover. The wind has changed. It's blowing out of the north now. And right into Southern's face. It's third down and four with five minutes to play in the game. And it's a draw play to Muhammad. He runs to the 31, and he looks like he has a first cellular first down. And if he does, the drive stays alive for yet another time. 4.54 to play as the wind picks up here at McAndrews Stadium. It's blowing out of the north at 10 miles an hour, and the temperatures dropped significantly here in the last few minutes. There is a forecast for rain tonight. Into the ball game comes Little. Out of the ball game goes Holling Shed. Robinson's going out too. Curtis Jones is in for Muhammad, and he's through for the night. After a 202-yard night, Muhammad heads to the sideline with 4.43 to play in the game. Officially 2.09. 2.09 is his total. 
for Muhammad. Handoff goes to Curtis Jones. He's trying to run to right behind Anderson off right end. Piles to the 35 and out to the 36-yard line. Hill just wanted to get a first down before he subbed, and he does with Muhammad through for the night with 12-21 for the season now with 2:09 in this game. He has rushed for four more touchdowns, school record for points in a season, and for rushing touchdowns in the season. He has 18 rushing touchdowns in five games. Second down, four yards to go with four minutes to play in the game. And Sam Bursky still in there at quarterback. Two receivers, one receiver to the left, one to the right. McAllister spread three yards at left end. On second down, they run the ball to the uh, fullback, and it's Walter Bucky, and he struggles to get to the line of scrimmage. And it's third down and four with 340 remaining in the game. SIU is headed for four and three. It's headed for two and oh in the Gateway Conference. The la- uh-oh. Benny Sapp of Northern Iowa turned and said something to the field judge, and the field judge threw a flag. He's the Iowa State transfer, and he just mouthed off at the field judge, and the field judge flew threw a flag. He leads them with four interceptions. Sapp. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense. 15 yards. And he's going to come out of the ball game very quickly. Coach Farley will sub at that spot. Well, it, Southern faced with third and five. Was going to have to give the football back, but now with 3.33 left, that penalty gives Southern a first down, and SIU would love to just run this football out. The ball's at the 49-yard line, and the Salukis, 3.33 from making it official. Boy, the wind's really picking up here now. After the ball game, we pick the Ian Baker Chevrolet Cadillac go-to guy of the game. Might go with the D here tonight, Coach Green. Be hard not to. Yeah. Not only the defensive unit, but special teams. Yeah. So strong tonight. And now time called by the uh, Salukis with 3.08 left. They head to the sideline. They've called their final time out of the game. Let's break for a minute. The Salukis lead it 42 to 13. In the game. Music created for real music lovers by real musicians. Like Doug Robb from Hoobastank. When we first started playing, it was all about fun. Um, we never tried to sound like anybody. We never really paid attention to what was hot at the time. We definitely never sat around and, and tried to think about what will be hot so we can be that thing, you know? Um, I think eventually that being true to yourself will uh, prevail. I've had many, many, many fans just say, like, it sounds like you're writing my life story out, you know, because what I've gone through is what so many people go through, you know, it's just life in general. doing what I love, you know, and someone's paying me to do it. <laughs> this moment through music was brought to you by Budweiser Beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Timeout, Southern subject quarterback Stanley Bryant, the freshman from Florida, is in there now. On first down from the 49-yard line with 3.08 to play in the game, there's movement on the line and Northern Iowa comes across. The Panthers are clearly frustrated, but Southern was... Guilty on that play. Now it's starting to rain. On the offense. Five yards. Still first down. Now it's starting to rain. It's a driving rain out of the north here at McAndrew Stadium. Sending the remainder of the crowd home. Crowd that's here staying. Looks like they enjoy it. And I know the players don't mind it. Not with this ball game. Southern up 42 to 13. First and 15 now for the dogs. Bryant under center now for the Salukis. He takes the snap and they run the ball. It's Jones and he piles back to the 49 of SIU. Three minutes to play. It's all academic now as the rain starts to fall here at the MAC. And Southern Illinois University heads for a three-week road swing. Four and one at home. Four and three overall. Two and oh in the Gateway Conference. And will look for its first road win of the season next Saturday afternoon at ISU. Second down coming up. 11 yards to go with two and a half left. Brian under center ready to take the snap now for SIU. And waiting. And he has it. He gives it all off to Jones. Trying to get off right tackle. He runs to the 48 of Northern Iowa. It leads to third down and nine yards to go. 2.15 to play in the contest. 
Sapp has not come back in the game. I don't know if that was Farley's decision or perhaps the official. No, if they didn't, if they had thrown him out, he would have said they threw him out. Third down and nine. Rain coming down here now, but it's not dampening this parade here tonight as the Salukis are 150 from officially being 2-0. Bryant ready to get under center. It is third down and nine. And there's the snap. Uh Uh-oh, he dropped it. He falls on it. It's fourth down. Ten yards to go with 135 remaining in the contest. 135 to play in this mismatch at the MAC. And not often have we had mismatches at the MAC and gateway play, and the mismatch has been in Southern's favor. Well, you got to give the players a lot of credit, Mike. I think you also have to give SIU coaches a lot of credit because whatever their preparation and game plan was for this, it's certainly been on the mark. The players have done a great job of executing that plan, but SIU did some things early in this one to get themselves moving, get them on the board because going up the middle with Mohammed Abdul Qadir was not working early. They had to do some interesting things early, but boy, once they got this on the scoreboard, they've just steamrolled this team. Southern just took a delay game. Now puts Everhart into punt. Delay on the offense. Yard. Fourth down. Everhart is into punt now with 101 to play in the ball game. He's punted four times tonight, 43 and a half yards per punt. He's made all of his extra points. He's six for six on point afters here tonight. Back-to-back solid weeks by Everhart and back-to-back excellent games by Southern Special Teams. There's the snap. Scott gets the kick out of there. Line drive kick into the ferocious wind. It hits out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Very good kick into that wind. 55 seconds away from the win, and the E.N. Baker Chevrolet Cadillac go-to guy of the game. 38-yard punt into this rain and wind. Goes out around the 17-yard line, and Everhart's having a little bit of everything out here tonight, but once again, pins them inside their own 20-yard line. It's academic now. Northern Iowa's on the field, and the Salukis are less than a minute from the route. The route at the MAC. Last week we had the drive. (laughs) This week we have the route. 55 seconds left. Handoff goes to the uh, tailback, Breland. He slips, steps up, and runs to the 19-yard line. 45 seconds remaining in the game. The Salukis headed to a 42-13 victory, and Northern Iowa only has to want, run one more play. 42-13 as the wind is whipping at about 25 miles per hour out of the north, and the Salukis headed for 4-3, and 2-0 and in the Gateway Conference. 25 seconds left. Petrie ready to take the snap. He's waiting. Here it is, handoff to the tailback, and Breland runs again to the 23-yard line. 16 seconds to play in the game. Southern Illinois University has beaten back-to-back top 12 teams, is 2-0 for the first time in league play since 1991, and might crack the top 25 this week after a 42-13 win over Northern Iowa. Stay tuned. The postgame show is next. SIU Football on Magic 95.1 was sponsored in part by Ike Auto Park, Carbondale. You don't have the right price until you have Ike's price. Greg Sterick and You Save Office Furniture. You say big in Johnston City. By Larry's Pit Barbecue at Christopher, DeCoin, and Carbondale, where you can take everyone in your family to eat. By the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 702, providing a better lifestyle for members and a better life for all. By Right Do It Center at Murfreesboro and Sparta, making all your home dreams come true. By Prairie Land Seafood, Pinkneyville, selling fresh catfish, shrimp, and more direct to you. By Rich Davis, Vicki Scoggins, and Daryl Phillips of Century 21 House of Realty. By McDonald's, register at a participating McDonald's to be an honorary captain at an SIU home game. And by 710 Bookstore, Carbondale, under the lights or under the sun, shop 710 for everything Saluki. Saluki football on Magic 95.1 is a presentation of the Zimmer Radio Group. You know, none of this would happen if it wasn't for the IBEW. If not for the volunteer efforts of IBEW Local 702, Coach Jerry Kill's plan for night games would have been left in the dark. 
They've done a tremendous amount of work, and there was no way the project was going to happen unless the IBEW was going to help us out with the labor. And, you know, that's over $100,000, I think $100,000, $150,000 worth of labor that they've put in. They've done all the work. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 702, making the world and McAndrew Stadium a brighter place. Hey, Saluki fans! Go crazy! You've got Saluki pride? Show it! Flaunt it! Tell the world you love the dogs at Saluki Central. On the Strip in Carbondale. T-shirts, sweatshirts, polos, button-downs, custom gifts, glassware. Everything you need to show your Greek and Saluki pride. It's the largest and most eclectic selection of Saluki stuff in southern Illinois. So before you go to the game, grab some new Saluki gear from Saluki Central. On the Strip in Carbondale. If you love the Salukis. 